is the first meeting between the Auburn Tigers and the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, Ohio State came here in 1978, played Alabama, and got beat 35-6. So Ohio State won a big ball game today, an exciting game out of the Fiesta Bowl from Pittsburgh. Michigan will be receiving as Rick Rogers and Kerry Smith and Evan Cooper are the people that return kicks for them. In this instance, it'll be Rogers and Cooper going deep. And Al Del Greco will kick it off for the Auburn Tigers. Now, Auburn won the toss. They elected to kick. This will do two things that I can think of instantly, Frank Walls. One is it makes Michigan declare itself early as what they're going to try to do offensively. And secondly, assures Auburn to the ball for the second half. High and hanging, and it is Evan Cooper, a senior from Miami, Florida, who breaks it over the right side and comes out to the 25. Football is loose. Auburn pursuing it, and a Michigan man is able to get under the pile and come away with a football. It looked like number 12 uh, was piling underneath the group and uh, came up with it and saved it. That'd be Fritz Burgess. So here's the opening unit now offensively with Steve Smith, the quarterback, the senior out of Grand Blank, Michigan, six feet, 195. Eddie Garrett, your fullback at six feet, 215, a sophomore. Rick Rogers, your tailback, six one and 210. Uh, Triando Markray, wide receiver, six one, 180, a sophomore, very quick. And Vince Bean will be your flanker at six two, 185. They work out of the eye formation and Smith gives the ball to the tailback. And nothing fancy, it's just boom. And he comes rolling back on the back of his neck as Quincy Williams, the senior out of Douglasville, Georgia, belts him. Tim Nelson is the tight end, 6'2 and 240. Clay Miller at tackle, 6'4, 270. Jared Diorio at guard, 6'3, 245. Tom Dixon, All American center, 6'2, 250. Stefan Humphreys, 6'3, 255. Rhodes Scholar and uh, candidate Doug James, the other tackle, 6'2 and 255. So it is second down and eight. They started from the 26. The ball is out near the 28, and Steve Smith still got it. Rolling it out trying on an option, and Quincy Williams is after it. He rips the pass away and completes it up across the 35 to Sim Nelson, the tight end. And I expect we'll see that combination trying to hook up a lot tonight. The defensive unit for Auburn, and we detailed them for you in the pregame. They're big, quick people. Daly Smith, Auckland Humphrey, Williams Carr, and Jackson, Carr and Jackson being linebackers, and they are very active. Secondary got better as the year went along. David King's outstanding. My Jimmy Warren, Vic Beasley, and uh, Tommy Powell, who is a redshirt freshman. It is third down in the yard. The ball is just over the 35, and Steve Smith, the quarterback, checks his helmet in the stack and looks like he will come away with his first down. He's very close. The Michigan offensive front characterized as technique players. They're not as big as the Auburn people, but Dixon and Humphreys working in the middle of that line are just about as good as you're going to see at center and guard. Dixon made All-American, and uh, so did Humphreys. They're very talented, they're smart, and they have quick feet, meaning they can sustain their blocks as we look at both Jim back there. And they've come double wide now, Frank, to the bottom of the picture. Two quick wide people, and Smith hands it off inside. Carrying the ball, Eddie Garrett, the fullback, and the big sophomore from Milwaukee has got to think a tree fell on it. Here's a Michigan uh, per game offensive record for the year 276 rushing, 130 passing, showing they're primarily a running uh, offense and primarily a defense against the run. Very outstanding. You can give Garrett a yard on the carry, put the football right on the 38 now in the center of the field, second down and nine for Michigan. Just getting underway, the first offensive possession of the night. And Smith straight back to throw. Looks, and he's got a man. The pass is away, and he missed him. The pass intended for Mark Ray. They split in. He had turned it to the sidelines, and he was open in front of David King. Going back to the Auburn defense, their priority is going to be in this ball game, stop the run on first down. Try to keep... Michigan from making four or five yards as we look at Mark Ray who's had a sensational year broke in the starting lineup middle of the year and averaging 31 yards per reception. They're down and nine. They send Rick Rogers now to the top of the picture leaving the lone remaining back Garrett pass all the way three wide receivers and Smith gets away from the pressure goes over the middle with his pass the pass is completed to Tim Nelson the tight end he took it down the middle he was the bigger man of the group grappling for the ball, and an Auburn man is hurt on the play. 
Steve Smith has shown tremendous poise in these first passing attempts. He dodges uh, big Doug Smith, number 77, and he throws the ball on the run. Nelson's a beautiful target, and he hits him right on the numbers, but it's a little bit shy of a first down. Or at least, yes, it's a Smith, number 16, has had a great career. Bo Schembechler loves that kind of quarterback. Goes can run in critical situations, run the option, option play, and also can have the poise and confidence to pick out those short pass receivers. Chains out, and it is short of a first down by a half a yard. The Auburn man is still down on the field and time being taken for him. And a, it is David King, the left cornerback, who was involved in the fighting of the ball. He came across and at full speed collided with Sin Nelson, and the bigger man got the best of the exchange. In this particular instance, King at 5'10", 180, from Fairhope, Alabama, and Nelson 6'2", and 240. Number 27 is the right of your screen. He's an all-southeastern conference defensive back, just a real aggressive player. Let's see if we can tell how he gets hurt, as Mission is going to go for it on fourth down. Yes, the knee of uh, Nelson seems to hit him right in the head. Two tight ends in the lineup. Michigan's going to go for it. Gambling right out of the block here in their first possession. Fourth down and a half yards. And they're going. And Auburn's all bunched up in the middle. They've got eight people right in there to jog on the offense. And I don't know if he made it. Rick Rogers gave it his best shot over the right side. But the Auburn people just stepped him. Jeff Jackson, the linebacker, stepped into the slot and met him head on. He didn't make it, Keith. He's a full half a yard short. Great defensive play and a very big gamble by Bo Schenbeck. I guess his feeling is that the wishbone is so strong he'd, ra he'd rather uh, try to take a chance and make the first down. It didn't work. And so Randy Campbell and company now will come out and go to work out of the wishbone. There's Lionel James, 166 pounder from Albany, Georgia. Bo Jackson, who stayed at home to go to school. Bessemer, not too far from Auburn. And Tommy Agee from Maplesville, Alabama. The wide people are Christopher Wood. Chris is a 185-pounder, six-footer. They don't send too many wides. They'll swing them sometimes out of the backfield and breaking the bone. Right now, the first snap of the ball game for Auburn. Campbell rides it off and gives to the up man, A.J. the fullback. As Auburn goes to work on the Michigan 46, and the gain is about three yards. Up front, it is Ed West, tight end, 6'1", 235. The tackle on the left side is Steve Wallace, 6'6", 265. David Jordan, 6'6", 260 guard. Ben Tamborello, 6'2", 250. Jeff Lott, 6'3", 270 at guard. Right side is Pat Arrington, 6'6", 260. Don't be deceived by that jolly expression. He's a big old horse and is a heck of a blocker. Campbell pitches the ball outside. Lionel James is caught behind the line of scrimmage just about where they started their possession. Good defensive play by Michigan. We noted their defensive people run to the ball very well, but their core has been depleted some by injury. Yet Michigan has an extra defensive lineman in the ball game, and you can see that Meredith, number 96, had the leg of Campbell. He took a big risk and gamble by pitching it out. James made the catch, but look at the white shirts there on the play. Good pursuit. That one could have gotten away, Frank. Yes, it could. You know, normally, you don't pitch the ball under the rest of the quarterback. That is, doesn't pitch it. Third down and just a little more than 10 now for Auburn. As Michigan answers defensively and Campbell drops back. Has good protection. Throws down the middle. Intercepted. It is picked off by Brad Cochran. And Cochran is brought down. And it's Michigan's ball first down at their 37. So the gamble by Bo Beckler. He got away with it. Keith, I didn't mention Bo Beckler is the best at coaching his team, to his defensive team, to come out and play after a sudden exchange when the offense turns that ball over his defense comes out with more intense attitude than any i've seen now campbell just overthrows the, the wide receiver and the interception goes to cochran his fifth of the season no score 10 44 to go first quarter no score in the first quarter of the 50th sugar bowl game communication so important i talked to coach shim beckler yesterday about it we uh, practiced indoors. We have an indoor facility at home, and we piped in uh, crowd noise. And when I say piped it in, we came out of those practices with headaches, not from hitting, from the, from the uh, noise. So we have worked against it. But uh, if you're going to do a lot of work at the line of scrimmage, uh, that communication can be, it's hurt us in some games in noisy stadiums this year. Uh, so that's the reason we worked hard on it. 
The sound goes to the roof of the dome and comes bouncing right back down, and he really gets noisy. It first down Michigan after the interception on the fourth. Randy Campbell and the Wolverines go from their 37. Smith keeps the ball, and he just whack, 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 and then some. Right now, let's join our colleague Tim Brandt. Keith, on that last Auburn series, young David King, the cornerback, was hurt. It was his head. He didn't know where he was for a minute. I just talked with him. He says he's okay now. He still is a little bit wobbly. They're going to hold him out this series, see how he does, and then they're going to try to get him back into the ball game. Thank you, Timmy. Happy New Year to you. Up on the 38, it is second down and nine for Michigan. And I don't think Frank Steve Smith wants to get himself in that fix too many <laughs> times tonight, but he really got tattooed. Back he goes, straight back. Pressure on, hit as he throws, incomplete forward pass. Number 91, Big Ben Thomas, the junior from Ashburn, leveled Smith. General Ben Thomas, the alternate tackle that plays both positions for Humphrey and Smith, the starters, and yet the offensive blockers of Auburn say they'd rather block anybody on that front than General Ben Thomas. Quincy Williams, number 93, is rushing also, but Thomas gets to him and hits him by his arm is in the air, and it falls incomplete to the ground. Now that's called the installation of some respect. Yes. <laughs> Smith is already feeling the, the effects of that Auburn defense. It is third down and nine. And they go to three wide people again. It speeds up back to throw. Gets his pass away. He's got a man right open. It's Marcre. And Priando Marcre has a first down for the Wolverines at the Auburn 43, where Jimmy Warren brings him down. He completed that pass in the spot where David King would normally be playing. He's out right now, hurt. Jonathan Robinson in replacing him. Boy, Smith got the ball right on the money. He was rushed, had to get it over a, a defensive man and hit Buckray right on the money. Buckray has, Parkray has great speed. Number 18 has a 31-yard average. That's the highest I know of anybody in football that we played this uh, seen this year. He's had four touchdowns on his eight receptions. That's his ninth. And the Wolverines now took it on the Auburn side of the field. First down at the 43. Steve Smith gives the ball to Rogers, the tailback. And Rogers pops it over the right side and tumbles down to the 33 and close to a first down. And he almost broke it. Well, Smith's passing, I think, has set up the uh, running a little bit. Here's a number that I think we ought to talk about. Michigan's only two losses. They failed to rush over 200 yards. And Auburn, the same thing. The only loss was to Texas. They rushed 135 yards. Every other game, they broke the 200-yard barrier and won. So we'll watch for that as the ball game goes along. All right, now we see Pat Dye making some defensive changes while the chains are brought in for the measurement. They've sent Donnie Humphrey back into the ball game. Quincy Williams has come out now. That puts... The big horse is in there. It's almost a goal line front that he's going to be showing them as Michigan comes up a foot short. Keith, uh, Pat Dye believes uh, the same as Bear Bryant when he coached for Bear, play a lot of people. He doesn't think any of his players should play over 40 snaps. They seem to be just going through the motions, and he'll play a lot of people, a lot of people doing a lot of substitutes. Ball is sitting at the 33 of Auburn. It's a foot short of a first down. Ed Bo Schimbeck, what a fantastic career he has had bringing excellence to Michigan and also integrity to their athletic program. Currently, the American Football Coach Association president. They send Rodgers up into a, a wide spot, keeping the fullback Garrett and give the ball to Garrett. Garrett lunges ahead and on the offensive surge will have the first down for the Wolverines. Big Doug Smith out of Bayboro, North Carolina, Got a hold of him and brought him down, but the initial surge was enough. In talking to the Auburn coaches, Pat Dye, he, as we look at Pat, he told me that Doug Smith, number 99, had had the greatest two games of any lineman he'd ever been associated with, that, those games being against Georgia and Alabama, two key victories for the Auburn Tigers. I spoke confidently of the first down, but the officials now have marked it, and they're going to bring it back in. Bring the chain zone to take another look. Doug Smith uh, played for Pat Dye at East Carolina, and uh, when Pat went to Wyoming, he stayed at East Carolina, but when Dye returned to Auburn, he transferred. Let's watch Smith on that last play and see how he penetrated. Number 99, right there, going right through Art Miller, number uh, 79, stands him up. Now he should escape, and he grabs the ball carrier right there and pulls him back. And I'll tell you, Clay Miller's not a gimme. He's six uh, foot five, 270 pounds himself. Interesting. 
Clay Miller is from Norman, Oklahoma. His father's on the law faculty, but his mother and father both attended University of Michigan. It's a first down for the Wolverines at the Auburn 30. And Steve Smith hands the ball to his tailback, and Rick Rogers gets wide to the sideline. And slides down inside the 15 at the 13 and a first down. Interesting enough, the wide receiver, Mark Ray, not very big, has came out of Detroit, Michigan, a small school, is going to make the key blocks and let Rogers go deeper into the secondary. But you can see the offensive line had blocked Humphrey. They had blocked Carr. Powell, number nine, is chasing. But you're going to see the block right there on number 32 of Auburn, who is, who is substituting for David King, Robinson, right there. Wide receivers in Michigan catch the ball, but they block first if they want to play. Well, it's first down Michigan at the Auburn 13. And Steve Smith going down the line, options it out for Rick Rogers, and he is across the 10, to the close to the 9 for about a four-yard pickup. John Daly and Jeff Jackson shove him out of bounds. Here's Pat Dye, as we mentioned uh, earlier, in his third year, takes his Auburn Tigers to the Southeastern Conference Championship. He's a very dedicated, committed football coach. My kind of guy. Players really love him. Ball is just short of the nine. Second down, six. Rogers now, five carries, 33 yards. Michigan has done a good job of mixing up their plays. He's running, passing, reversing. Two tight ends in there right now. Carthen and Cattis. There goes Rogers inside the five and down to the three and close to a first down. They'll mark him about the four, I believe. Good blocking by the right side of the Michigan offensive line. Watch the double team. They knock Smith all the way. In fact, Smith takes himself out of the play with a little cross block. And look at the natural hole the cross blocking brought in. Theriol, Theriol, number 64, making the key block. How about that? That's a surprise and something you can't predict in bowl games. It's a tricky thing preparing your team. 35 to 9, UCLA. Wow. Third down and a yard for a first down. Smith keeps it, sees the goal line, dive, touchdown. has a big night. Look out. Upset seems the order of the day so far. Texas losing, the Fighting Illini losing, and Michigan has jumped out to a 6-0 lead over Auburn. When you have a quarterback that can run, he's just an extra weapon, a dimension that the defense has to play. Al Auburn was not ready for the quarterback keeping the ball. They were lined up inside. The offensive sealed them all. Bob Bergeron for the extra point try. He hit 22, now 23 in a row. And so at 7 minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first quarter, it's Michigan 7 to nothing over the Tigers. Here's the play again, looking from the ground level. Smith, you can see, is looking to pass. The defensive back laid back, covered receiver, giving Smith quickness to run. That was his 10th touchdown of the season, rushing the ball. We'll be right back after this. Thunder. Well, there's Mr. Smith, who has come to New Orleans. Well, he's been criticized by the Michigan fans from time to time. This year was very interesting in that he wore, uh, as Keith properly pointed out earlier, a, a shoulder brace from the injury that he had in the Rose Bowl game last year. The last three ball games, he's been very, very successful and effective. He took the brace off. His shoulder hurts no more. But they only scored 124 points in the last three games of the season, admittedly not against the top caliber competition, but included in that bunch was Ohio State. And that's not bad. He's just a competitor, the kind of quarterback all coaches enjoy working with. Bo Jackson standing there waiting. So the big man is waiting for Todd Slopey's kickoff. It's a high hanger. And it won't be Bo. It is Alan Evans. And Alan Evans is having a whole lot of trouble as he barely got it across the 10 before Fritz Burgess brought him down. A high hanging kick and gave Michigan plenty of time to get down. 
It is Hammerstein, Sinchich, Brooks. They're the three down linemen with Rose, Lyles, Anderson, and Mallory, the four linebackers. He wanted to go, thought he could go to a four-man front, but the police. Uh, but Keith, he's put uh, Dave Meredith, number seven, uh, some number 96 in the ball game. In the first series, he played with four down right. linemen. And uh, let's see if he is right now. If 96 is in the ball game, no, he's got, no, he's not. No, he's, he's got, not right now. He's got those linebackers up along the line, and the back pursuit can't catch up to Lionel James. And uh, Little Train comes blowing out across the 25 to about the 27 in the first down. Here's the sweep. When you kept, try to defend the wishbone, you add this play to it, and it just is a different type of play. The defense is not ready for it. A great block by Jackson uh, on the cornerback. Watch the block by tight end West, number 85. Bo, uh, Pat Dye told me he's blocking 89 on, on uh, Carlton Rose, who's a fine football player. That's some block. He's the best block in the southeast, according to his coach. Now Auburn's got some working room from the 27th. Kimball turns it upfield and gets across the 30 out to about the 32. If Auburn gets to gobbling up six, seven yards on first down plays against you, you better start looking for another lock on the door. Here's the Auburn stats for the season. You can see that they're primarily a running football team, and championships are won on defense against the run. They have passed. Uh, if you can say see far fewer yards than uh, than most football teams we see today so far Bo Jackson hasn't seen the ball I was going to say that he's, he's coming right now with the sweep the unbalanced line penalty flag as they give it to the up man AG and it's going to be against Auburn yes the offensive lineman must be moved the umpire threw the flag immediately I believe it was before the snap and Michigan will have no chance to refuse the penalty I asked Pat Dye if he was going to get uh, let Bo have a chance to do some running right-handed one of these days. The referee is Dixon Holman. They're all from the Southwest Conference, this entire team of officials. Still Bo Jackson, who is probably the premier. Dead only. ball. Ball start. Offense. Second down. To continue, Bo Jackson is a premier running back in the South, and we talked about him earlier, but the coaches told me yesterday that he's getting more and more confidence about his running inside, something that they want to do in this ball game before they can uh, get ahead, I'm sure. Well, they back him up to the 27, where it is second down and 10. And Campbell gives it to Lionel James. And James runs to midfield. Evan Cooper finally got him out of bounds. The offense split two ends, the defense widened widens and then you have some running room inside these are all the options you, you can do with the wishbone you can see it's a little counter play something that the wishbone didn't have bo jackson number 34 is going to make the key block on the linebacker anderson number 57 and watch how elusive james is as he makes his break and finally 21 evan cupper brings him down jackson uh, james is the, the number three rusher in auburn history behind brooks and Chris. but here goes bo on his first carry, the right halfback flashing over the left side. Hammers his way down to a first down for Auburn. And they marked him right about the 32 of Michigan before Tony Gantt could bring him down. Here are some of the running backs that Auburn has had in the past that are in professional football. Of course, Brooks and Scribbs. And then we see James. And remember, Jackson is just a sophomore. 6'1", 222, and maybe the fastest back in America. So inside the 32 of Michigan now on first down Auburn as the Tigers start to move the ball for the first time. Michigan leading 7-0. They counter it back, and it goes to Bo Jackson, and he goes inside the 20 to the 18. Here again, we see the defense trying to play the wishbone, and we see it just a regular T formation play. Starts to the right, it comes back to the left, Good blocking. The linebackers missed the tackle right there. Big foot. Bo Jackson continues to run. Take one more person. Centrist number 53 is the nose guard, but he's not strong enough to try to stop Bo Jackson. Centrist is a Centrist is a nose guard. 220. Jackson runs right through him for the first half. From the 18, Campbell. Outside, Lionel James, good coverage, bounces off the first one, the second one gets him, that's Rodney Lyles, number 80. 
Michigan's defense played it beautifully. But uh, there's two ways to play the option play as we look at the Auburn coaches calling the play. One, you make it a sweep by forcing the quarterback to pitch real quickly as soon as the play starts. The other way is to play it slow, and Michigan has mixed it up, giving Campbell some problems. War Eagle. There he is, the Golden Eagle, and Clayton Buford has come in at wide receiver, bringing a play from the sideline. Second down, still about 10, just inside the Michigan 18. Four minutes and 20 seconds to play first quarter. Campbell loses the football. Michigan recovers it. Number 66 pounced on the ball, Mike Hammerstein. Here's the danger of the wishbone, something that Bo Schimbeckler has worked on. Brooks is very quick, number 52. He's going to penetrate right to the left of your screen. Watch number 52. And uh, Campbell is reading them, and he should have left the ball with a fullback, but Brooks, six foot six, plays both of them. He, he plays the fullback, third, reaches out with his right hand, grabs the quarterback, knocks the fumble loose. Mission has stopped the drive. We'll be right back. Two turnovers for over. There's the time remaining in the first quarter of play. Two turnovers, a pass interception, and now a fumble by Campbell. Not a good night so far for the Auburn quarterback. And the Wolverines first down at their 24, leading 7 to nothing. And Steve Smith on first down to throw. Pressure's on, swing pass out, trying to set up a screen for Rodgers. And it's incomplete. Number 94 was in making life miserable for Steve Smith. That's Harold Hallman, a junior out of Macon, Georgia. Altman is a substitute for nose guard uh, uh, for Altman. Very quick. You can see number 94 is not very big. Was a former linebacker, but can really put pressure on the base. Defensive coordinator for Michigan. Yeah, he's jacking him up. Isn't yeah, he? that's Gary Bola, who used to be the head coach of Illinois. Was with Bowl before he went to Illinois. Returned to him with him as a defensive coordinator. Second down and ten for the Wolverines. Three wide people, Smith, quarterback draw up the middle, and he is brought down as he gets to about the 27. Greg Carr, who led the team in tackles this year, makes the stop. If you wanted to just pick a perfect linebacker for intelligence, ability, this young man is a great football player, all-conference, made one All-American football team, is a 3.7 student in civil engineering. The coaches say he's just an ideal player, combines excellence in both the classroom and the locker room. Gain of three yards by Smith. Third down and long. Third and seven. The pass is away. Marcre has it. First down. Michigan at the 39. David King is back in there at the cornerback position. Keith Alban did not have a defense that could possibly cover that pass. They had two receivers over to the right. King, number 27, is covering both an inside receiver that you don't see and Mark Ray the outside, and all he could do was break on the ball, but not before the completion and another first down. Good call and a good read by the defense uh, by Smith on the defense. Steve Smith is now past Rick Leach as Michigan's all-time yardage leader. He has 6,468, and the night is young. 3.10 to go first quarter. Smith gives it to Rogers, and Rogers big hole and goes down to the Auburn 44 before Vic Beasley brings him down. Give Stephen Humphreys, the pulling guard, the All-American, the credit for that play because he was the pulling guard. He trapped out. Watch to the right of your screen, number 76. Watch him pull and trap, and look at the hole right there. James, number 73, is also pulling. Just a natural hole after 76 and cleared the way. So Michigan is doing what Pat Dye and his Auburn Tigers and hope they would not be able to do, run the football. And the passing has been the key along with it, Chief. They've mixed it up, passing and running. Makes it tough on the defense. Auburn 44, first down. Steve Smith again on first down. Goes for the air, goes for Mark Gray, and it's tipped away. Jimmy Warren, the junior out of Birmingham, came across and tipped it away. Warren is just a junior starting for the first time. Mark Gray is going to go deep on a route. And uh, Warren uh, takes a chance. He anticipates the throw. He comes in front of the receiver. Can only get one arm up in there. Had he got both, it would have been an interception. Players are coming in with the two uh, guards, Art Verlotis, 59, and Jerry DiOrio, 64. DiOrio has come in at the left side guard position. They flip flop them. Sometimes it'll be Humphreys over there, and sometimes he will move to the right side. And right now, he is on the right side of center. And Smith. The throw. He looks downfield. He lets it go, and it is incomplete out of bounds. 
number 25, Vincent Bean, ran out of real estate along the boundary. Anybody that's watched the Auburn defense knows that David King will gamble on a run and play fake. He overplays the run. It's exactly what happens here. Good fake by Smith, and the Mark Ray gets in behind King. You can see how far he is. The pass is thrown a little bit too far on the outside, and he couldn't quite hold on to it. That was Bean, the receiver. It is third down and 10 now at the Auburn 44. Keith Vince Bean has had a great career. Started every game for three years. Sneaky pass. Here's the same formation. Two receivers into the boundary. Michigan four out of five on third down plays in this game. Smith's pass. A bullet to Mark Gray right on the numbers. And he just flat dropped. I tell you, Smith has been sensational so far. He has been right on the target. Mark Ray, number 18, is turning inside. They have a decoy out in the flat taking the linebacker. You can see how wide open it is. The ball couldn't have been thrown better. He had to have taken his eyes off of it to think about running with it instead of catching it and falling down for the first down. First uh, thing first, Keith. Yeah. Don Bracken, the senior out of Thermopolis, Wyoming now, is in the front. Lionel James is deep to receive it. He's averaging right at 41 point, uh, yards in his career punting. He wants to kill this one deep if he can. He hangs it up there. James lets it go, and it takes the bounce inside. And it affects an Auburn bounce and will come out to the 20. It was a 43-yard punt by Don Brackett. You've got 2.17 to go in the first quarter, and Michigan leading by seven. The Auburn Tigers will go to work from the 20. Rough night so far for Auburn quarterback Randy Campbell, but his coach has a lot of confidence in him. Well, he's a phenomenal young man. You know, he doesn't have phenomenal ability, but his uh, the power to think and concentrate and, and execute uh, our offense and do it under pressure uh, has been amazing to me. Those comments made yesterday by Coach Pat Dye. Randy has thrown an interception and been hit and fumbled the football. Trey Gaines now, a swift freshman, is not in the lineup for Auburn as Campbell rides it down and gives it away to the up man. It is Kyle Collins in there now, replacing Tommy Agee at the fullback position. 195-pound sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama. No gain. Michigan defense are moving and causing some blocking problems, some, some assignment problems to the Auburn offensive line. Sensage came right in there and stopped the play. ABC's Wide World of Sports season premiere. Coming up next Saturday, the Harlem Globetrotters in Hong Kong. Plus the World Cup weightlifting championship at 5 Eastern time. The ball goes to Bo Jackson. And he slashes up to near the 25. Running in traffic. Something he didn't do particularly well as a freshman. Began, as Frank noted a little while ago, to get the handle on it about midway of this year. And he is a terror inside right now. But the, Auburn, uh, the Michigan coaches told me that they really fear his cutback as much as anything, which shows that he's got that great awareness and eyes and, and the speed to make the cutback work. Third down and five from the 25. Five-man defensive front for Michigan. Hits it outside. Ball gets away from Lionel James, and he's going down back on the 11. The penetration, Randy Campbell was hit as he tried to deliver the pitch to James and Rodney Lyle was coming on a loop from the outside and James never had a chance. I believe Brooks number 52 is the one uh, that gets him again. No, his offensive, his offensive man tripped him and Auburn is very lucky to get the ball back and uh, it's going to be a punt formation and Michigan's going to have good field position. Lewis Colbert from Phoenix City comes in to do the kicking, a junior averaging right at 41 yards per kick on 55 punts. He's standing back in his end zone. Evan Cooper is the deep man for Michigan. It is a short kick, and it takes a big high Auburn bounce back to the Michigan 45, where Cooper is surrounded at the 48 and drops. So the Wolverines get the ball back at 17 seconds to go in the first quarter, and they've got very good field position after that 45-yard punt. I guess number 74, Jordan, is the one that steps back and seems to trip the quarterback. Jordan's left foot steps back and catches the left foot of also a camel and trips him and uh, causes the play to be very ineffective and a loss in fact. You see camel has good agility to get the ball off for the lateral but I still think that's dangerous to pitch when uh, you're under duress. All right let's see what the Wolverines can do with field position. First down they probably go there keep they've been running and passing mixing it up. Smith changing the play. With Roger 
Rodgers, the tailback. And maybe a yard. And the first quarter is going to expire before we have another play. So we've played 15 minutes in this 50th Sugar Bowl Classic. And the Michigan Wolverines out of the Big Ten lead the Auburn Tigers 7 to nothing. The Superdome in New Orleans. Right of the Sugar Bowl. And Michigan, second down nine from their own 49, leading seven to nothing as we start the second quarter of play. Steve Smith back to throw. Over the middle. Pass drop. Hit Sim Nelson. He threw it up. That is a little deceptive because it wasn't that accurate. Sim couldn't pull it in. Here are the stats for the first quarter. You can see Michigan leads in first downs, in rushing, and also in passing. And I think that the real key is in Michigan, as Bo Schembechler said, we've got to make some yardage passing. If we do, we'll be successful. The two key points, the turnovers by Auburn, stopping themselves twice deep in Michigan territory. In case you possibly have not heard, Georgia beat Texas 10 to 9. UCLA routed Illinois 45 to 9. And it's third down and nine for Michigan, leading Auburn. Number three ranked Auburn behind in the second quarter of this game. Smith runs away from the pressure. Now can't pull loose. Reaching in is Dow Ockman, the nose guard, to drag him down. Big, big play. Dow Ockman has made all Southeastern Conference two years in a row. Plays the middle guard was a linebacker when he came when Pat Dye came to Auburn. He wanted to move the nose guard and has been sensational for the last two seasons. And it brings up fourth down and kicking time. Don Bracken in to do the punting and Lionel James will go deep. Bracken has a lot of time. Spins it up at the 12. James hit. Ball loose. Michigan's got it. James should have signaled for a fair catch, Keith. He had no business trying to catch that ball and dodge the Michigan defender. Watch it again. Number 85 is right down on top of him, Marcelli. Marcelli and uh, James should have signaled for the fair catch. He took a chance. It was a mistake for a senior to make. Michigan in great position. It was a fumbled punt that caught Texas the ball game today. You can see that James was trying to run with the ball before he caught it, and he didn't watch it into his hands and bring it into his chest. Terrible mistake. Terry Smith recovered it, and now it is Steve Smith to go to work. First down for Michigan at the Auburn 13. Three turnovers by the Tigers in the first half. Vince Bean in motion. And the handoff to Rogers, the tailback. And he runs it inside the 10 to the 9. Donnie Humphrey brings him down. Here are the scores from earlier today as Lastinger ran the winning touchdown in from 17 yards. Yeah, John hadn't had a very good day, but boom, in he went for the winner. Ohio State hung on to beat Pittsburgh 28 to 23. And there's the UCLA Illinois score. Big day for New High School. UCLA started the season 0 3 and 1. You want to talk about a coach of the year candidate? How about Terry Donahue? That's the toughest thing in the world is to turn a program around like that after you've lost three games. Second down and six, and they go to Rogers again. And over the right side, Rogers is hit. Auburn supporting the cornerbacks were coming up and the strong safety Tommy Powell the red shirt freshman from Greenville Alabama really laid a lick on him and you've got a penalty coming up against Michigan holding Keith I believe that uh, Auburn will, will accept it uh, even though they tackled the ball care for a loss uh, move them on back and get them into a passing situation take them out of their run pass option and also back up Bergeron a little bit in yes. case he gets the ball. That's Greg Carr talking to the referee, Dixon Holman. It would be third for you people at home. It would be third and probably eight, or it would be second and, uh, what, uh, 17. I take my chances moving them back. 13 minutes and 22 seconds to go in the first half. Still holding offense still second down look watch number 95 right here you can see he's the man blocking uh, it looks like he's got his hands on him and grabs him and the flag comes right in there oh the ball is on the 20 
Second down and 17. Mark Ray to the bottom of the picture. Steve Smith getting pressure, and he is hammered. The ball stops out of there. It is Auburn's football. He did not have the arm going for it. It looked to me like that Daly was coming from the right. Smith was going to throw to the left, and he didn't see Daly. Daly seemed to me to have delayed his rush, and nobody picked him up. And so Auburn forces a turnover and gets the football back first down at the 27. Some definition for you on that last play. The rule says that the quarterback's arm must start forward before it becomes a forward pass. His arm was still being raised above his shoulder. Bo Schimbecker was screaming incomplete pass. I think the official was absolutely right. The arm must start forward before he can be ruled an incomplete pass. Yeah, he's he, still cocking it He's there. still cocking it there. I don't think that uh, the officials missed that at all. I think it was a good call. And here comes Auburn now after Michigan's first turnover. 7-0 Wolverines lead. Campbell turns, gives to Jackson, and Jackson blows it out of the middle. And runs for a first down up to the 45. I haven't seen a runner that excites me like that in a long, long time. This was the counterplay made famous by the fear, uh, fear fatigue people. Watch, he's going to hand the ball to Jackson deep in the backfield where he can make some cuts. But watch his power. Watch his leg drive. Watch his determination. Watch his extra effort. Just a sensational run. Well, that, that's about as tough as you can get. Right? It is. Five people had a shot at it. Dicks his helmet in the crowd again and picks up three more yards before Mike Mallory brings him down. Bill Mallory is the son of Coach Bill Mallory, number 42, the leading tackler, played uh, uh, defensive tackle for Michigan last year, but because of injuries, moved back. Watch him come in and make the play right there. Puts a good headgear right on the, the numbers, and uh, with help from his teammates, he gets Jackson down. Second down and seven. Football is at the Auburn 48. 12 minutes to go in the first half of play. Campbell rides it off to the fullback. It's Tommy Agee for an Auburn first down at the Michigan 38. And you really got to watch that up man out of that wishbone because he went for 219 yards against Maryland. Well, Brooks, the defensive tackle, is jumping outside and uh, caused the fumble with the quarterback. But now the, the, you can see the, the hole as the read was perfect by the quarterback, leaving the ball with the fullback. The triple option means you can leave it with the fullback or you can keep it. A.G. popped right through, number 30. Put it on the 39 of Michigan, first down. Trey Gain is in wide. And Campbell to throw it, goes to the sideline. Lionel Green calls it down, and he got a foot down inside the boundary at the 25. This is a pattern that Auburn put in for the Michigan defense, something that they looked at the film and saw what might be open was a player back coming out of the backfield the defensive end who would not drop off you can see James to the right of his film screen he's going to flare out to the boundary Campbell makes his first completion and that's a real confidence builder builder for Campbell the quarterback see how wide open James is makes a nice catch one foot comes in bounds with possession legal reception Ball goes to Lionel James again on the sweep to the right side. Gets inside the 25. They'll give him to about the 23. Rodney Lyles, the tackle. I thought that was an excellently touched pass into James, too. Well, Pat Dye has explained to me on the three games that we've done, we'll throw the ball as often as we have to. He's got great confidence in Campbell. Campbell doesn't look good throwing. He doesn't look effective running, but he's a winner. 19-4-1 and four and one is a starting quarterback. Second down and eight. Ball on the Michigan 23. Miami jumping out to a 7-0 lead over Nebraska. This may be the day of upsets. Who knows? Auburn going wide with it. Bo Jackson. And that's a fine, fine defensive play by Evan Cooper, number 21, to trip him up. The coaches say that the quarterback cannot take on the black blocker and make the tackle. Evan Cooper, the fine defensive safety, did exactly what we say you can't do. He took on James and defeated the block and still made the tackle on Jackson. Oh, now with six carries and 61 yards in the ball game. The ball is sitting on the 20, where it's third down and a short six for Auburn. Two. Just one tight end. Regular formation. Craig Gaines is the wide man. Campbell 
leaves it with his pullback and nothing doing for Tommy Agee. So that's going to bring up fourth down and it'll bring Al Del Greco into the ball game for a field goal try. Well, Del Greco, Chief, remember tied an NCAA record with six against the University of Kentucky this year. Auburn has been stopped inside the 10 in the last two ball, inside the 20 in the last two ball games, and 10 out of 11 times. Only once have they put it in the end zone when they penetrated, and it's left some scars, as we can tell, again, on their offensive unit. He is Auburn's all-time leading scorer, Al Del Greco, and he's going to hit this one from 36 yards. Mike Mann, a quarterback, is the holder. Kick is up, low, driving, and missed it. So the Auburn Tigers are turned away at 9.31 to go in the second quarter, and Michigan still leads 7 to nothing. Michigan turns Auburn away. Steve Smith out at quarterback. Yesterday, talking to Steve, I asked him what it's like to play for Bowl. Playing for Bowl is uh, an experience in itself. You know, you learn a lot. You learn a lot about... Uh, not only football, but how to be a person, how to, you know, your character builds as you're here. Uh, you know, it pushes you to get a degree. And, you know, it's been a great four years. Uh, it's too bad it's over. I guess it really hasn't dawned on me, but it's, you know, here it is, it's over. And quite a career for him. I remember when uh, some of the people were on Smith uh, and Jim Beckler both in his sophomore year, but both staunchly defended Smith. And he carefully molded him into a record-setting quarterback at Michigan. First down for the Wolverines at the 20. And they send Rodgers in motion. Smith coming down the line on an option play. Keeps it. And turns it across the 25 out to about the 27. Harold Hallman makes the stop. And you note that uh, they're moving people around, as Frank noted earlier, in the Auburn defensive front. Hallman relieving Altman. So that he's keeping fresh people in there. Look at the numbers for Steve Smith this season. They're just outstanding. Passing 53%, 13 touchdowns, but rushing set an all-time Michigan record, averaging 6.9 yards per carry, and that includes sacks. Second down, three. Rogers, the tailback, appears to have the first down as Donnie Humphrey knocks him down. Number 79. Humphrey's a big, strong youngster. Number 79. Weighs about 270. Good hands. Watch him get the blocker with his hands right on. Now he's got to disengage and try to release and make the tackle. Pretty difficult. But he does come right back in and his teammates help him with the tackle. But not before. Rogers got the first down. Got it just over the 30. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Michigan 7. Auburn nothing. Smith straight back on first down, goes down the middle with it, and Sim Nelson, the tight end, drops the football. That is the fourth pass that's been dropped by Michigan receivers, passes that could have and should have been caught. Nelson was a defensive linebacker, moved over to tight end. It's called 38 passes this year, the third highest of any Michigan tight end. The ball couldn't have been thrown better, as he properly pointed out. He took his eyes off of it. Keith, you see him turn and look, anticipated getting hit, and drop the ball. When you go down the middle like that, you know you're going to get You've got to anticipate it, and all you do is just leave your body limp and look it in and grab the ball. Harry Smith, number 23, the tailback, comes up into a slot now. They're double wide to the top of the picture, and on second and ten, Steve Smith's pass goes over the middle. It is complete to Vince Bean. Bean is knocked down, short of the 40, and short of the first down. They'll need about two on third down coming up. Bean, number 25, a senior, has started every game for three years, coming across, trying to get underneath the linebackers, which he does. Daly misses him right there, and Bean fights the extra yards, giving it very short for first down. About a yard and a half for the first down. Michigan offense continues to mix up passing and running very effectively. Garrett and Rogers are set back. Steve Smith still got it. He get gets his pass away, and the intended receiver, Bean, falls down as he makes the cut on the artificial surface. Losing his footing, could not make the catch, and it brings up fourth down. Whoever said Bo Beckler was conservative. Third down and one, he goes to a deep comeback pattern. Naturally drawing one-on-one, -on -one, but you have to throw it, and you have to catch it. Watch how open Bean is 
He had gotten in behind number 27, David King, the all-conference halfback. But as Keith mentioned, he loses his footing right there. The, the ball still hits him right on the chest. Boy, that Smith has not been off target any tonight, Keith. Yep. He's right on target. Bracken's punt. Low, wobbly. Gainus lets it go. Mistake. Michigan's going to kill it. Michigan touched at the it. five. They touched it at the 10, Keith. Did they? Yes, he'll come back to the 10. No, it won't. Yes, he will. They'll bring it back. Believe. Yeah, you're right. The beanbag's up there. I see it. 51-yard punt as Auburn lets it roll. 7-19 to go, first half. A little good. to go in the first half, and a 7-0 Michigan lead. Auburn's football, first down. It is on their 10. Michigan has outplayed them so far. And on both sides of the ball, Keith, the Michigan defense has given uh, Auburn a lot of blocking problems. They're getting penetration, which just nullifies the effectiveness of the wishbone. You've got a double tight end alignment for the Tigers now with West and Parks, both in numbers 85 and 82, respectively. Give it to Bo Jackson. Going outside. Over the top he goes. Brad Cochran, the sophomore from Royal Oaks, was out there. Tried to hit him, but uh, Jackson just went right up over the top of him and picked up six yards. Jackson once again shows what a great athlete that he is. He's the first three letters uh, winner for Auburn in over 30 years in track and in baseball. That's Gary Mola, the defensive coordinator, giving the signal. Here's Jackson's rushing records, and you can see against Alabama, 256, against Florida, 196, his biggest game. Second down and four. Inside. Lionel James. James remembers on the 5'7", 166 pounds. He gets tangled up with Al Sensich, a big junior nose guard out of Cleveland, Ohio. And he gets two yards. The Auburn offensive line outweighs the Michigan defensive line by about 15 or 20 pounds per man. But the Michigan defensive scheme is to penetrate, use the angles, use their quickness, and they're doing it very effectively. Pat Dye looks very worried right now, and I don't blame him. He ain't there. You can't block him, can you? That's right. Smoke is hard to block. They're down in two. Campbell to James. James turns it up, and he is short of the first down. That's Cooper. Evan Cooper coming up out of the secondary. The strong safety made the play for Michigan. It's fourth and one. team has had very poor field position for two reasons. One, the Michigan offense has made a couple of three first downs on virtually every possession, hunted the ball, covered it, and started Auburn very deep where it's very hard to score. Any point. Lewis Colbert, first punt tonight, 45 yards. Evan Cooper is deep. Look at it from the end zone as our director, Andy Sedaris, gives you the picture. Snap is on. Kick is away. Cooper's going to field it at the 38. And go down at the 40. Quincy Williams downfield to make the hit. It was a 43-yard punt. Good coverage by the Auburn uh, special unit. The 14th Olympic Winter Games from Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. The Olympic tradition continues on ABC. The games of the 23rd Olympiad in Los Angeles next summer. 250 hours of Olympic coverage in 1984. Keith, what are you going to be covering uh, over there for the Winter Olympics? Ski jumping and speed skating. And aren't you going over there in about a week or tomorrow or the next day? I'm going to Austria to we'll watch. see the spring tourney, the final of the four meets. Miami is now out to a 10-0 lead over Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. Upset City. It goes to Rick Rogers, the tailback, and he splashes over the right side. And picks up a couple. Auburn continues to uh, substitute freely. They've got Thomas, the freshman linebacker, in there now for Kurt Greg Carr, and he came through and made a great ankle tackle uh, on Rogers. Weather down here in New Orleans has not been exactly the Orange Bowl score we gave you. It's not been much of a picnic, but it warmed up, and it was a gorgeous day today. It's time for the whole nation, I think, to get a little respite from the rough winter that we've had. Second down, eight and a half. Steve Smith, option down the line, going to keep it as he goes to the boundary, and he's tumbled out of bounds, short of the 45. They'll mark him out near the 44. Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley knocked him out. Now, 
Let's consider what's going on and what has happened. You see that uh, Texas, uh, they were beaten today, losing to Georgia 10-9, so they're 11 and 1. Nebraska's behind by 10 to nothing. Auburn at 10 and 1, they're behind 7 to nothing. So it's really a great opportunity at hand, it would seem to me, for both Auburn and for Miami, because they're the only two contenders for the national championship left playing unless Nebraska gets all cranked up and comes storming back to beat Miami. If Nebraska wins the game, it's academic. You know who's number one. But if Nebraska should lose, who knows what could happen as David King almost picks that ball off. He almost got it on the rebound. Everyone that plays Auburn knows that David King is a fighter. He doesn't give any ground. He plays a tight man on man. He gambles and he takes chances. Right here, Bean is open momentarily. You'll see King, number 27, come into the picture. The ball was thrown poorly, and uh, King got a hand on it but couldn't hold. Bracken is in the front now, and going deep for Auburn is Trey Gaines, and Gaines is way back. He's standing back inside his 15. The punt comes from the 35. And he's got to come a long way to get it. He won't get there. So once again, the ball is bouncing around. And Michigan will down it at the 21. It was only a 35-yard punt. And you've got four minutes and ten seconds left to play in the first half. With Michigan sitting on a 7 to nothing lead. Well, the Auburn Tigers got a little better field position out of the kick. Ball touched at the 21. And that's where the Tigers will go to work with Chris Woods coming inside to the boundary as the wide man. And they come out of the wishbone. First man is the fullback. Campbell took it away from it, kept it. And Randy is up across the 23 for a couple of yards. We're well, talking, Frank, about the uh, the possibilities, you know, if, if, uh, if Nebraska should fail to win tonight. Uh, Miami course a lot of people think they just automatically ought to be voted number one but if Auburn comes back to win this game I, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised we have split in the poll. I think you're right Chief. I, I think it, if Auburn can win this football game they should be given serious consideration. It's going to be dependent upon who look the best uh, between Miami and, and Auburn. Campbell gives it off to A.G. A.G. fights his way up near the 30. He's going to be a yard, maybe two yards, short of the first down. Here's Tim Brent. Keith, just before the Auburn offense went onto the field this time, the coaches pulled them all together. They said basically they've been doing everything right except for one critical mistake every series. They told them to keep doing what they've been doing, but it is critical that they score before the half. They better hurry. They've they only got 3.05 to go. It's going to be very, very unlikely unless they get a long run out of Jackson. Third and a yard and a half just to keep the ball right here. Michigan overshifted to the wide side of the field. They give it to Lionel James, and James may have it. A little man, little train, bangs in there and looks like he's out near the 32. Mike Mallory and Dave Meredith making the hit on him, and it is an Auburn first down at 2.47 to go in the half. Auburn is going to have to loosen up, I think, and throw the ball, maybe with two wide outs and mix up some running and passing. They've been very stereotyped running the ball on virtually every down. Michigan is playing it and got like everybody have, up uh, there. Like to have Jackson out there one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. With a little swing pass? They've got that in, in their playbook, too. He's coming to the tight side, and he is hit. Solid tackle by Tom Hassel, outside linebacker. Hassel came off of the block of West. West was put out and was blocking him man for man, and he released from the block, disengaged, and made the tackle. Watch West on this particular play. He's blocking Hassel, who is an outside linebacker. He's staying with him. Now he should drop and cut his leg. And uh, instead, Hassel releases and comes in and makes a perfect tackle. Gain of a yard, second down, nine at the 33 for Auburn. Campbell back to throw. Looks for Chris Wood going for him. He's down there, and he can't get to it. He had single coverage. And he had uh, picked up a step and a half behind John Lott, but in his curl behind the defender could not quite reach the football. Still say that Pat Dye is going to have to throw more if they're going to win this football game. Michigan overplaying as we isolate Lott. You can see Woods, his speed, as he runs right by Lott. Lott should not be turning back facing the ball because that slowed him down enough to let Woods get in behind him. It is third down. And nine. Campbell's pass. 
pass out to James, and Lionel can't get to it. Cooper was there anyway for Michigan. I don't think Lionel could have gone very far. If Campbell had seen Buford, Buford was wide open for a touchdown. The defensive back for Michigan slipped, and uh, Buford was open for the touchdown. Campbell did not see it. And you've got a minute and 47 seconds to go in the half now, as Auburn will have to punt it away. Colbert's punts have been 45 and 43 yards, and again, it's Cooper deep for Michigan. Good high-hanging kick this time, forcing Cooper to call fair catch. The ball comes sliding down short, and then takes an Auburn roll, and rolls dead down around the Michigan 17. 50-yard punt and no return. Coming up on ABC Sports on this Saturday, Sports Beat, Howard Cosell at 3, the Pro Bowlers Tour at 3.30, Chris Schenkel, and then ABC's Wide World of Sports, premiering with the Harlem Globetrotters in Hong Kong. First time ever, visit to the People's Republic of China. It'll be fun to see. Keep it correct that both teams have uh, three timeouts. It'll be interesting to see if Auburn uses the timeouts to try to get the ball back one more time. <laughs> 1 34 on the clock. That's the fullback, Eddie Garrett. And he's out to about the 24. He got the better part of six yards on that carry, and Miami has struck again to lead 17 to nothing in the first quarter over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That is really a shock. Well, Howard Snellenberger is going to bite the stem right out of that pipe. He's a great football coach. He's proven that, he that for many, many years. In fact, Bear Bryant told me that Howard was the best assistant coach he ever had to work for him, had the best offensive mind in particular. They take it inside on second down and three with Eddie Garrett, the fullback. And he may have a first down as Humphrey brought him down. Humphrey, number 79, plays the right defensive tackle. His job is to penetrate if he possibly can on these situations, go inside, and he's being blocked there by James, number 73, keeps his feet, moves inside, makes the play, but not before another first down. Hurt his arm, had to come out of the ball game. Less than a minute to go down the first half, and a first down for Michigan after 28. And Smith well, gives the ball off. Up the middle goes Rodgers. And Rick Rodgers gets something out of the play, not a lot. Looked like the hole was there for a moment, but then a bang-bang tackle by Harold Holman. Stops him just short of the 30 for a yard pickup. Keith, did you ever remember when we played a game that neither team used the timeout? No. In the first half, neither team has so far. 15 seconds to go, coming up at halftime. Those are the features we have for you. And halftime is at hand. Michigan's going to stay right in the huddle. They will not come out of it, and we're going to go to the clubhouse at halftime with Michigan leading Auburn by a score of 7 to nothing. and here's Tim Brandt now with Coach Motion Beckler. Thanks, Keith. It looks like the two keys to the ball game have been their turnovers and your ability to pass. Now, yesterday, you said you had to pass. You've had success. Well, I, I think two things. One, uh, we dropped too many passes. Uh, their turnovers have helped us. We have to start to generate a running game. We must maintain more possession and get our defense off the field. That's the key. We've got to possess the ball a little bit more, and we can't do it unless we're running the ball back. Seven points on the board. It could be more. You're right about the drop passes. How do you correct that, and what's causing it? Well, I don't know. It's just one of those things, you know. Anytime you play that kind of football, you know there's a chance you'll drop the ball. All right, Bo. Thank you. The conservative Bo Schembechler no more. Third and one, and he throws a pass. We'll be back with halftime activities after this commercial message and a word from the local station. Bring the two teams back onto the floor of the Superdome in New Orleans for this 50th Sugar Bowl game. The only touchdown scored was this run by quarterback Steve Smith as he rolled out to have a look for a pass, saw a little crack to the goal line, and stuck it in. This is the advantage of having a quarterback that can run. Now, the defensive backs would have been charging up if their tailback had had the ball, but since Smith is a threat throwing the ball, he, they lay back and let him go in for the touchdown. Run covered three yards. So far, it's Michigan pretty well dominating things. Tim Brandt back at the Sugar Bowl with Auburn head coach Pat Dye. Pat, it looked like you hurt yourself badly there with turnovers. I mean, Absolutely. you killed yourself. 
Uh, you know, that's something we haven't been doing all year long, and of course we do it tonight, and Michigan deserves a lot of credit. You know, they force some of them, and uh, we haven't executed the option very well, and uh, we've, we, we've continued to try to go to it, but we haven't made the option game work. Uh, the best thing we've done, of course, is get the ball in Bo and Lionel's hand, and uh, we got to come back to the second half and do the same thing and do it better, not turn the football over. We began to play pretty well defensively, and uh, we played a lot of people the first half, and I hope we're going to come back and play a lot better the second half. They seem to mix the run and the pass very well there early, and it looked like you guys were having trouble playing a little bit soft. Has that been correct? Well, they have great offensive football team. They're averaging over 400 yards a game, and, and uh, we knew coming into the game that they were, they were uh, a good running and passing football team. Of course, they did that against us. I'm not sure how many yardage they got the first half, but, you know, we stopped them some, too. So, uh, and, of course, we had a great goal line stand down here and got a turnover there, but we've had some good things happen to us. We're lucky to be just seven points behind. We, and uh, I just hope the second half we can play as good as we can capable of playing. We haven't done that so far. Okay, Pat, right. keep them going. All right, Keith, we're all set down here. Thank you, Tim. Attendance tonight, 77,893. Watching in the Superdome. Give you an idea of how things are going for Auburn now. They're on first down plays. They've done very well. They picked up uh, 86 yards on the first down plays and are averaging uh, just under seven yards. But on third down plays, Frank, they're minus 15 yards. Makes a big difference. Keith, you're exactly right. If you look at the stats there, you can see that Michigan is not now all that effective, 143, but they've mixed it up enough to keep Auburn off balance. And if they had caught the passes, I think it had at least two touchdowns. But look at this, Keith. Two Jacksons, both <laughs> Keith. One a Heisman and one a Wise. I think that uh, both of those are accurate. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm I'm kind of glad to be on the same uh, carpet with uh, Big Bo. Frank, I, I'm just absolutely shocked at some news I've just heard that uh, a longtime friend, a great athlete, and uh, a young man that I've worked with, goodness, 25 or 30 shows, worked with him in, in a couple of Olympics, but Kenny Sitzberg was found dead in his bed this morning at his home. Only 38 years of age, appears to be of natural causes, and it just Too bad. It takes, uh, breaks my heart, because he was only 38, a young family, his wife Jeannie and three daughters, and we've lost him. It's just so sad to have something like this happen at the beginning of the year. And I know that there are thousands of people who are Kenny Sitzberger's fans and friends. I, I felt compelled to announce it because it came as such a shock to me, and I'm sure will to many others. Kenny Sitzberger gone. Auburn will receive the football to start the second half of play. Bo Jackson is not the middleman. It is Brent Fullwood, number 22, who is the middleman who received the kickoff from Todd Sloppy. The Michigan Wolverine playing a very heady football game in the first half, leading by a score of seven to nothing. Ball's in the air, and it's again a very high hanging kick at the two. It is Fullwood. And he tries to get in behind his wedge, but they can't open an avenue for him, and he goes down at the 21. The Michigan defensive unit, Big Mike Hammerstein, defensive tackle, 240. The nose guard is Al Sinchich, 230. And Kevin Brooks had a terrific first half, 250-pounder. Carlton Rose, the linebacker at 210. And Rodney Lyles played very well, 225-pounder. Jimmy Anderson inside at 220. And Mike Mallory at 215. Look at the neck on Mallory. And you can find a shirt big enough to fit him. His daddy put him on weight early. <laughs> Lyles led Michigan with five tackles in the first half. Auburn operating first down from the 21. And the same offensive unit that started the ball game goes to Lionel James, gets outside around the corner, comes up the boundary, and gets across the 30 up to about the 35. Where Tony Gant finally brought him down, and there was some wicked blocking to get him around the corner. John Lott is a cornerback, 6 foot, 180 pounds. Brad Cochran, 6'3", 205, a sophomore. Uh, the strong safety, Evan Cooper, outstanding in the first half, senior from Miami. And Tony Gant, a sophomore, at 6 feet, 165. Let's watch West block again. Bo Schimbeck, the number, told me that West is the best block in the end in America. You can see why right there as he blocks Carlton Rose, number 89, right to the ground. 
And it's first down Auburn out at the 35. And Randy Campbell back on the first down. Goes deep with it down the middle. Buford on the run. And Clayton Buford can't quite run it down at the 15 of Michigan. Cooper was with him. Ball just kind of hung up on him, and he could not run it down. Here's your offensive alignment for the Auburn Tigers. Jackson James A.G. in that wishbone with Woods, the wide man, and Campbell at quarter. And up front, it's West Wallace, Tamborello, Jordan, Lott, Arrington. Keith, in summarizing the Michigan defensive strategy, they've gotten penetration on the option play, and the defensive backs, Cochran and Cooper, have had quick support, just like linebackers, and stopped the plays at the line. Second down and 10. Well, he gave it to the lead man, A.G. And A.G. is out just over the 38, two yards. So they're looking at third down and long. Here's an interesting stat that uh, may surprise people. Third down conversions, Auburn, one for six. Auburn has six third down plays and has lost a total of 15 yards. That's despite the fact now that they're, they're averaging almost seven on first down. Conversion downs have hurt them. They certainly have. Third and about eight. Campbell to throw. Dumps it off to Bo Jackson. Runs through one tackle. And then he is gang tackled at the 45, a yard short of the first down. But Campbell had Ed West. Uh, it's a fumble. Fumbled. He fumbled it in the pile up, and Michigan comes up with a football. And the Wolverines get another turnover from Auburn. Somewhere in the bottom of that big stack, as he was gang tackled, they forced the ball loose, and Brad Cochran, number 30, came out of the pile with it. You'd have to say that Michigan is playing a, just a perfect uh, game as far as Bo's strategy. You play defense, you play hard, you limit the other team's offense, you gang tackle, you force the ball loose. Jackson, number 34, has it. He's changing it from left to right. He doesn't have possession. Look at the white shirts coming in there to help on that tackle. And the ball pops there right out. And number 30, Cochran is up. Here's the ball to Rogers, the tailback. And from the 45, he gets a yard. Auburn now with four turnovers in the ball game. And uh, Michigan with only one. Put that in proper perspective. Michigan was number one in fewest number of turnovers with 15. Auburn was number two with 16 for the season. Averaging one and a half per game. They've already had four. Michigan won. Here again, Coach uh, Keith, I believe defense is just about dominate most ball games. Uh, in the bowl games, I should say. Lack of practice time. Second down nine. Ball sitting on the Auburn 44. Steve Smith back. Steps away from the pressure. Gets his pass off over the middle. Rogers dropped it. That's five times the ball has been on the hands of Michigan receivers, and they have dropped it. John Daly is a defensive end. For Auburn, Doug Smith, the big tackle we detailed early in the going. Dow Ockman sharing the nose job with Harold Hallman. Donnie Humphrey, the big starting uh, tackle. And uh, Quincy Williams, the defensive end. Greg Carr, the linebacker, leading tackler on the team. And Jeff Jackson is the other linebacker. And it is third down and nine now for the Michigan Wolverines at the Auburn 44. They've got Vince Bean and Triandos Marcre, both wide to the top of your picture. That's the open side of the field. Steve Smith back, the suit's on, swings it back the other way to Rick Rogers. And Rick, turning around, had a little room, but in extending himself to reach the ball, fell down. David King, the cornerback, who was hurt early, came back to play. The other corner is Jimmy Warren, 180-pounder. And the safety is Tommy Powell is the strong safety at 190 pounds, and Vic Beasley, the free safety, at 185. This is the fifth punt in the ball game now by Don Bracken. Here's the turnover numbers. You can see very uncharacteristic of both teams. Auburn's turnovers have really hurt them, but their defense came back out and forced the penalty flag down as that snap comes spinning back and bounces to the punter Bracken. He kicked it out of bounds, and the ball is going to be marked out up around the 18, but let's see about the penalty flag. That was only a 26-yard punt. He was aiming for the coffin corner. It's against uh, Michigan, it appears, and uh, Pat Dye's going to have a tough decision to make. I believe I'd refuse it. 
No, if it's only a five yarder, though, it won't make that Wouldn't much make difference. that much difference. He might kick it out of bounds inside the 10. Right. Illegal procedure, offense, too few men on the line of scrimmage, penalty declined, Auburn's ball. And Auburn will take possession at its own 18 yard line. And Michigan still sitting on that 7 0 lead here in the third quarter. The average uh, starting position in possessions for the two teams, uh, Michigan far and away out of one in that category. They've been averaging around their 40 start possessions. Auburn right around the 21, and right now they're starting just short of the 18. So they haven't been blessed with great field position much in the game. First down for the Tigers. Campbell must be checking off. He's taking a long count. And it goes to the first man, A.G. Pete, let me just add that uh, since it's just making a, a lot of big plays, he's a very active middle guard, not very big, only six feet tall, 220. He's, uh, Cal at the center is trying to, to block him, but he doesn't. He runs right by. And the amazing thing to me is that Auburn continues to run the triple option, and they must have a minus average on it right now. In regular plays, they have a big yard average. They go outside to Bo Jackson this time. And Jackson just simply can't run through that kind of traffic. Nobody can. Not, not even a freight train. He gets out to about the 22. Bo picking up on that play three yards. So he's got 72 yards in the ball game. Lionel James has 57 yards. And the up man, or the front man out of the wishbone, Tommy Agee, 28 yards. Even the, as we look at uh, the score in the Orange Bowl, that Nebraska touchdown, incidentally, was scored by Steinfeld. Well, in the uh, All American Guard. One of it was that play where they put the ball on the ground as he saw one on four. Third down and six. Ball is out near the 22. Well, it's A.G. again. This time he pops it. Oh, look out. Caught from behind by Evan Cooper. Penalty flag goes down. I think he may have a face mask coming up. That'll add some more yards. I think we should mention that uh, Bo Schimbeckler's defensive has always played to the wide side of the field, forcing, forcing the offense to go to the narrow side. And you can see what happens when they run down the boundary. Good block by Bo Jackson on the defensive end, and A.J. goes for the first down in a 15-yard penalty. Not incidental face mask. The rule says turning, pulling, or twisting 15 yards. Personal foul. Defense, first down. Big penalty moves the football all the way to the Michigan 45. Auburn's offense still seems a little bit confused to me, Keith. They're not operating like they have in, during the regular season. They've got a first down as Campbell. Penalty flag is down again. Goes wide to Jackson. Goes coming back the other way. Runs right into Rodney Lyle. Once again, they were trying to go to the wide side of the field. If you can run the football the wide side against Michigan, you, you're just better than they are. They just got the entire football team over there. I think Michigan might have been offside. Yep. So the play by Lyles is nullified. Jackson turned back to reverse his field. And he just, Rodney was right there looking him right in the eye. But it's wiped out. By the five-yard penalty. Yeah, it's not just a five-yard penalty because the loss was about a 14. Offside. Defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Still they, first down. They lost. There was a difference of really about a 19-yard penalty. 14-yard loss and five yards on the penalty. Big break for Auburn. And they're sitting now on the Michigan 40. First and five. close to the 35 looks like he might be a yard or so short of his first down I know when we used to play Texas Keith when we used to play Texas wishbone and I've seen Oklahoma many times they would call a predetermined play to get the ball pitched Auburn doesn't do this they read every play the penetrating lineman is forcing the handoff to the quarterback I mean to the fullback and therefore Jackson is not getting the ball 
Lionel James has the first down. Little train getting down to about the 33, where it will be a first down for the Auburn Tigers. Time remaining third quarter, 9.37. And Michigan leading it seven to nothing. Three teams crashing away with national championship ideas. Nebraska and Miami and Auburn here against Michigan. And the high-ranked teams are both trailing. Illinois, number four, defeated today in the Rose Bowl, roundly by UCLA, 45-7. Number two, Texas losing to Georgia 10 to 9. Steve, I go back to watching the bowls many, many years. It seems to me the underdog wins about 75 to 80 percent of the time. 30 days is a long time to be the underdog and uh, reverse of that to be the favorite. Auburn Bench asking the crowd to quiet some, a crowd of 77, almost 78 now. That's Jackson. Bo Jackson inside the 25 and close to another first down. Boy, when he gets it turned up field, the shoulder square, he can really lay a lick on you. Yep. The all the offensive line really came off that football, but the key on that play is West, number 85. He had lined up to the right, shifted over the left because Michigan flip flops their linebackers. Number 80, Lyles, is not used to playing a tight end, and you can see the hole that was opened up by the block of West. And it is second down and less than a yard back to Jackson. Jackson's got the first down at the Michigan 21. ABC's Wide World of Sports premieres next Saturday. Clown Fences of Basketball in the Far East, touring Hong Kong on their first ever visit to the People's Republic of China. And from Tokyo, the World Cup Weightlifting Championship. At the 5 Eastern Time next Saturday, the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Outside it comes Lionel James is thrown down by Rodney Lyle. Never had a chance. Keith, you cannot run to the wide side of the field against Michigan. The entire team is slanting and moving that way. Lyles is on the left. You can see him at the bottom of his screen. He's just going to penetrate right up. Now he sees the pitch. He comes in behind the block. Uh, Jackson should have turned back and tried to block him, but a big loss. Auburn again getting trouble when they get close to the goal line. Yeah, getting he lost six yards on that back to the 27, so it's second down and 16. Jackson. Great ability to accomplish that much. He got back to about the 21, turned it back inside spinning, but Cochran got enough of him to bring him down. Auburn uh, coaches told me that Georgia in the Alabama game, they scored one touchdown when they had 11 opportunities, and they've been stopped twice today when they had an opportunity. So that's one touchdown out of 13 opportunities. Ball is on the 22 where it's third and long. Third down, 11. <laughs> Give it to James up the middle. Lionel James is caught and brought down as he gets over the 15. Somebody made a great tackle to save a touchdown. Cochran, Brad Cochran. Brad Cochran, number 30, the draw play. The block by Jackson on the linebacker, and you can see number 30 made a diving stop of the James. Watch Cochran, number 30, just a sophomore. Missed all the season last year. Comes in and I believe that Jack, uh, James would have scored had uh, Cochran missed that tackle. Del Greco is in for a field goal try. They'll mark it on the 21. It'll be 31 yards. He has missed one earlier from 36. This one is up high enough, and splits the middle. And Auburn finally gets on the scoreboard at 6.17 to go in the third quarter. It is now Michigan 7 and Auburn 3. Auburn will kick off with 6.17 to go in the third quarter, getting the 31-yard field goal from Del Greco. Michigan sends Rick Rogers and Evan Cooper as the deep people. Del Greco to hit it. And we'll 
see whether or not old momentum has changed shirt kick is way back into the end zone Evan Cooper will put it down there and it'll miss Michigan's football first down at their own 20. Steve Smith has uh, is five of 17 for 55 yards and you can see Nebraska has just scored again in the Orange Bowl and that is now Miami 17 to 14 there Nebraska's first touchdown was the old guard around play. Some of you may remember it a few years ago in an Oklahoma game when Randy Schlossner picked it up. Quarterback laid it on the ground. Schlossner picked it up, ran it in for a touchdown. Well, tonight, Turner Gill laid it on the ground, and uh, the old Dean Steinkuhler picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown. First down for Michigan. Let's see whether or not Steve Smith now can get some momentum going for his offensive unit as he pitches the ball back to Rick Rogers. Rogers running wide and busts a couple of tackles and gets across the 30. There were two Auburn men out there. Number 91 was over there, Ben Thomas, and David King, 27, and by golly, Rick Rogers just split them. 91, Thomas, fine junior tackle, alternates at both positions, pursues beautifully. He gets good support from King coming up. The two of them should make the play, but watch this. Rogers, a slasher, 225, cuts right between them, keeps those legs turning, and comes close to scoring. Got a first down out of it. Picked up 12 yards up to the 32. And they hand it inside to the fullback. Garrett. Garrett now has some daylight. And he's out to the 38. That's a good six yards there. Quincy Williams coming from the backside should keep right on the line of scrimmage. He gets a little bit too deep where he cannot really put his shoulder pad into Garrett, number 32. And he misses another tackle for Auburn. And a big gain for Michigan. Second down and four for the Wolverines as Mark Ray comes to the bottom of the picture. Steve Smith. Caught. Caught. Right at the line of scrimmage. Gerald Williams. A big 265-pound sophomore tackle from Valley, Alabama. Jumps on him. Lost on the play of about a half a yard or so. Well, this is a real crucial first down. Michigan seemed to pick up a little momentum as we look at those Jim Beckham staff making the first down and coming close to the next one. And Auburn getting the penetration and stopping it for a loss. Third and a long four. Smith back. Gets it away over the middle and it is incomplete. And David King almost picked it off. And he's beside himself. Well, the ball was thrown so hard, it's thrown like a bullet. I don't see how King could have possibly caught it. Let's watch it again and have another look, and you can see why the, the Smith is a little bit in front of the receiver. As from, look from here, and the ball goes right by the receiver and hits King right on the arms and falls incomplete. Bracken is in. Watch, watch Williams right here, number 93, really hits the blow on the Smith, the quarterback. Bracken spot. The six of the game. High spinning spiral. Gainer back at the 16. Down he goes. At the 17-18. 46 yard punt. Good hang time on it. A two yard return. 420 to go third quarter in Michigan leading 7-3. Once again, Auburn doesn't have very good field position. They've got to start at their 18. It's been a picture book uh, play by Michigan. Make a first down and two, long kick, good coverage. Start the opponents in deep. Let your defense take over. Michigan moving that defense around. And Bo Jackson hit behind the line of scrimmage, comes back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Hammerstein, big junior from Wapakoneta, Ohio. Hit him. Once again, that uh, penetration, I don't know. I'm sure as we look at Pat Dye, he's wondering himself, what's happening? The Michigan defense are getting the jump and penetrate. Jackson got hit in the backfield, Keith, on that last play, was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Michigan, Bo Schembecker told me, if Auburn wants to throw the ball and beat us, that's fine, but they're not going to beat us running. That's what he told me this morning. When is he not said that? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Campbell, oh, what a bad, Randy, 
Campbell just about gave Michigan the football down inside the 10. Tom Hassel, the outside linebacker, stepped in between Campbell and Lionel James, and Campbell went ahead and committed himself to the pitch, and they're very lucky to get it back. What's happened, this is an option pass that the receiver's covered, then he pitches to the back. But the trouble is, Michigan, Hassel, number 48, was right in the line of fire, and he could have caught the ball and walked in. He's lucky. Auburn was lucky again. Eight-yard line. Keith, I've noticed Auburn's confidence is with a low ebb in their offense. They are barely getting back up the line of scrimmage. They're discouraged, disappointed. They don't know what's happening to them. Third down and very long now, and they've got Bo Jackson way wide to the outside and in a receiver position. And they hand it off inside to Tommy Ager, the fullback, and he runs it up to about the 12, 13. And once again, Auburn's going to have to kick it from deep in their own territory, and Michigan, if they handle the ball, will have very good field position. What's happening to the Auburn offense? Penetration, quickness by the Michigan defense, stopping the play before it ever gets a chance to get started. Fourth punt of the ball game by Lewis Colbert. Evan Cooper is deep. Ten Wolverines up there now. They peel back some. Not a very good kick. It's going to hang up high. And Cooper calls a fair catch up at the Auburn 45. 32 yard punt. And so the Michigan Wolverines are operating on the Auburn side of the field one more time. Time winding down here in the third quarter. Michigan still sitting on that lead. Well, they've got control of the game. Field position. Their offense seems to be effective enough to make some first downs and the defense has been sensational. First quarter touchdown still standing up. They put it on the Auburn 46. And Steve Smith still has it. Looking to throw it does and it's incomplete. Well we got two footballs on the field. One of the quarterbacks over there warming up for Michigan. Here's Tim Brent. Randy Campbell was just talking to the assistant coaches down here, and he says that Michigan is disguising his defenses extremely well. They're lining up one way, and then by the time he snaps the ball and gets a predetermined read, they're jumping into something else. That's what happened on that pitch, and it hit the defender right in the face. Steve Smith ran it in from three yards for a first quarter 7-0 Michigan lead. Auburn's come back with a field goal. He chuck it down to 7-3, to 31-yard field goal by Del Greco, and that's all the scoring we've had as Michigan literally has controlled the flow of this football team. And this is Rick Rogers, who's having a big night. He's closing in on 100 yards himself, and he picks up about five on that carry before Greg Carr brings him down. Michigan offensive line, according to Bo Schimbeck, but may not be the biggest that they've had in some years, but they are the smartest, and they pick up the blocks and uh, the assignments and do a great job. You can see Rick Rogers' numbers there. He's had some good games so far. After Texas lost today, as you see the breakdown of Michigan offensive front, after Texas lost to Georgia today by a point, 10 to 9, Auburn, of course, their hopes for a possible national championship soared. And what with Miami leading uh, Nebraska 17-14, they're still up, but they're just not playing very well right now. As Sim Nelson steps across the middle, makes the catch on the Steve Smith pass, and he's close to a first down. He's a little bit short, and Bo Schimbeck is going to have a tough decision, it appears, from here. About, a, about two feet. Watch Carl, Keith Carr on the blitz coming right through, making the, the throw, uh, quarterback throw quickly, but the tight end has to be open, and the quick adjustment by Smith and the tight end allows for the completion. Greg Carr has been pretty quiet. He's the leading tackler on the Auburn team, but the misdirection plays by the Michigan offensive people that so far have kept the Auburn linebackers pretty quiet. It is fourth down, and they're going. Fourth and a yard. And now Steve Smith calls timeout. And that's the first timeout we've had called in the ballgame. We have 27 seconds to play in the third quarter, and that's the first timeout called in this ballgame. We'll be back in a moment. In Michigan's opening session of the ball game, after the kickoff, they gambled on fourth down and a yard and didn't make it. Up around midfield. Now they're sitting down at the Auburn inside the 37, fourth and a yard, and they're going. Hard to hear. 
Nelson, Tim Nelson, the uh, end, tight end, was flecked out about three yards, and he jumped. The crowd noise, Keith, in my judgment. It's hard to hear the signal. Evidently, Smith tried to change the play at the line, and Nelson was too eager to go. He wanted to make that foot. Watch number 95, right here at the bottom of your screen. He jumps, and the defensive man, I think it's Spencer Williams, puts his hands on him. When he does, it's a ball start, and the play is over. And that brings in the punter bracket. On fourth and six, Trey Gaines goes deep for Auburn. Fund again us at the 11. Fair catch call. Uh, let's repeat what we uh, played earlier in our ball game when Bo Schembeck was told about how they had tried to prepare for the crowd noise in the dome. We uh, practiced indoors. We have an indoor facility at home, and we piped in uh, crowd noise. And when I say piped it in, we came out of those practices with headaches, not from hitting, from the, from the uh, noise. So we have worked against it. But uh, if you're going to do a lot of work at the line of scrimmage, uh, that communication can be, it's hurt us in some games in noisy stadiums this year. Uh, so that's the reason we worked hard on it. Keith, what he means by work at the line of scrimmage, meaning that Smith comes up and changes the play. Looks over the defense, he sees where he might make the best yardage, and he calls that play at the line. Ball is just short of the 12. For Auburn, they've had bad field position most of the night. He starts possession. They give it back to Bo Jackson. And Jackson just keeps on turning and runs him out of trouble after the 24. The play that he it makes this yard is a reverse play. It's going to start to your left of your screen, a fake to the fullback, hand back to Jackson. Michigan pursues very quickly. Anderson, number 57, is blocked by the tackle. Jackson tries to cut back, finally get him down, but not before a nice game. Picked up 12, and it's first down Auburn at the 24. I'm just about gone in the third quarter. They get the snap off. Pitch it out to Lionel James. He's got some daylight. And he runs it across the 35. And that's another Auburn first down as the third quarter comes to a close. With Michigan leading still by a score of 7-3. to three. And we'll be back with this 50th Triple Bowl game after this commercial message of the word from a local station. We've got 15 minutes to play in this 50th Sugar Bowl Classic. And if you believe in omens, well, Auburn just went over 200 yards in rushing. They have not lost a game this season in which they've gained 200 or more yards on the ground. They have it first down at their own 35. They trail 7 to 3, and the whistle stop them. Once again, the crowd noise, Keith. The quarterback was getting ready to snap the ball, and uh, the lineman moved. Auburn has been substituting regularly. Jordan, their all-conference player, is just coming back in at the offensive guard position. Ostrowski, number 65, coming out. Dead ball, ball start, offense, still first down. Here's the number that Keith was talking about. Auburn and, as far as that, Michigan, the only games they've lost is when they failed to rush for over 200 yards. Both here are the stats. Auburn has picked up and gained, as you can see, but the big problem Auburn has had four turnovers, something uncharacteristic of them. They only had 16 for the season. First down and 15, ball back on the 30. Oh, that Michigan man really came off in a hurry. I think he might have been a little bit too quick. Oh, Looked like nose guard Sensich. Yeah, Sensich was ready to penetrate against that wishbone, and that's been the, the secret of Michigan's success uh, getting some penetration to guard and tackle watch since it's number 53 not very big but he's going right over the center trying to get in that backfield but he jumped the snap check so we've had five yard penalties marked off here and we've run no time off the clock in the fourth quarter <laughs> dead ball illegal procedure contact by the defense in the neutral zone prior to the snap still first down Jan Coward has been playing most of the time at center tonight. Ben Tamborello has an injured uh, left hand, and it's hampering his play some. This is Lionel James looking around, trying to find some daylight. And he wiggled around, and sure enough, there was just enough to get into the boundary before Cochran knocked him out, and he picked up six. 
Auburn uh, makes a lot of people miss tackles, and Bo Schembechler told me, so I don't see all that good blocking. I see missed tackles. I said, yes, Bo, but look at the ability they've got. Here is a perfect example. Watch James get, he should have been tackled right there. It's right at the line of scrimmage by Hassel, but he has that elusiveness, those moves, and he ends up making a nice game. Kyle Collins ran out of his shoe blocking on the play. Tommy Agee is back in at fullback. Tommy out to get some rest. Second down, three, after a seven-yard pickup by James. Campbell making Michigan wait. Gives the ball to Agee. I think Age has probably carried the ball as much tonight as he has in any game other than perhaps the Maryland game where Maryland uh, gave him a little more room to operate. He's carried 10 times so far tonight and picked up 56 yards. The reason he's carrying the ball is Michigan is penetrating deep enough that the quarterback cannot get outside and he's hoping that Age has running room inside when he leaves it with him, but he doesn't. The Michigan defense reacted beautifully. Third down and still three and Auburn is now two out of 10 on third down conversion. Give the ball to Jackson. Yes, sir. They don't do it, though. They give it to Agee. And it just depends on the spot. It's going to depend entirely on the spot. He's laying on the yard line, which would give him a first down, but uh, that official has not marked the ball yet. I believe it's a first down. Look, they bring the no, they brought it no, back. They brought it back. They moved the ball back three inches. If I was Pat Dye, I'd be out. No, I wouldn't be out there, but I'd be yelling. It's going to be two inches short. He moved the ball back. Auburn runs on fourth down many times during the ball game. That's nothing unusual for them. During the season, they run on first down, on fourth down, over 30 times. But I still would be scared. <laughs> Auburn fans have got to be uptight right now. Could be the ball game. Yes, sir. If they make it, they've got a chance to win. If they don't, the defense will have to be very discouraged when they take the field. Oh, my goodness. What would you do? Penetrate Give it to 34. That's what I'd do. Michigan's coming, too. Boy. Campbell keeps it. He's got the first down. Well, they're not giving him a very good oh, mark, Keith. They certainly aren't. They're not giving him a mark at from all. The far side has marked him short. Did it? He sure uh, did. Uh, 45 yard line. Boy, they didn't give him anything. Campbell trying to climb up his center's back. I don't know why they didn't go full over the top. That's the number one play has been all season. And off to Jackson, he just goes right over the top. That's been their best short yardage play. And Campbell, the only weighs 165 pounds. Not very good running quarterback when you step back. Well, the offensive folks had better exercise some cheer for their defenders right here. The ball is inside the Auburn 45, where it is first down for the Michigan Wolverines. They lead 7-3 to three with 13.44 to play in the game. It is the fourth time that Michigan has been able to start a possession on the Auburn side of the field. And yet, Keith, they haven't scored the one time, and that's a real credit to the Auburn defense. They've got to have awful lot of leadership right now. It's got to assert itself, come out, and try to get the ball uh, back for the offense. Well, field goals start looking pretty prominent that's here. Right. Too. That's right. Auburn has to win the game. They'd have to go for two. They, if they should score a touchdown after a field goal. This is Rick Rogers. Penalty flag goes down as Rogers gets to about the 43. Number nine came flying in, Tommy Powell, and then missed his target and took himself right out of the play. I believe. Let's go back and look at uh, the pictures we talked about earlier. And the one thing that, uh, watch the, uh, now that's you can first see down. the, Keith, look at the ball. It's right yes. on the, on the yard line. That's the first down. Official comes in and moves the ball back. That was on third down. He moves the ball back and leaves it about two inches short. Now, I don't know why he picked the ball. Golly. I don't understand. <laughs> well, the linesman had marked him with his left foot, right? Why would the other He was inside in? the yard mark, uh, the, the line. Oh, watch him see the linesman here. See his left foot? Now, now the umpire's back there spotting the ball again. What? 
I don't know why the headlines was not spot. Now he's back. There's the ball right there on the yard line in the first down. Well, the penalty was against Michigan for holding. It's first down and 20, and uh, up goes Rick Rogers. Down goes Rick Rogers. Short of the line of scrimmage. Well, Greg Carr, the linebacker, 54, came firing through and got him with some help from Quincy Williams. Keith, we'll see if Pat Dye's theory of uh, the fourth quarter being here since he's substituted. You can see he's been running in and out these defensive people. They haven't played over 35 plays, and uh, Michigan has been playing most of the ball game with very few substitutes. It's second down. The football is sitting just short of the Michigan 48. And they've got to go down inside the Auburn 35 to keep the football. Second down. Bullet left down by number 42, Jeff Jackson, the senior linebacker. Most coaches will tell you that linebackers on a run and play fake don't have a chance to break up the deep curl. Jackson, number 42, at 4'7 speed. Watch him. He watches the quarterback when Smith uncalls the ball. Look at him. Watch him dive. Get his left hand on the ball. It would have been a completion and a first down. Great play by Jackson, the senior linebacker. Smith now started out like gangbusters in the first quarter, but he's cooled off. He's 6 out of 21 for 59 yards and 0 for 7 on third down attempts. The last seven. Ball is intercepted. Caught by an Auburn man at the Michigan 40. Goes down at the 39. It's Greg Carr. Boy, when you've got a defense like that, you have got an ace in the hole. Smith got hit by one of the Auburn rushes. Let's see. Jeff which. Jackson hit him. Jackson, number 42, blitzing. You can see both linebackers. 42 is, and let's see, uh, Garrett tried to block him. Well, number nine, Powell had his arm, and Jackson was hitting him right in the middle. Had two men on him here to me, Keith. And uh, who intercepted? I can't see. Uh, Greg Carr. Greg Carr. What a play for Auburn. Well, let's see if the defense is now giving the offense the football on the Michigan 39. Let's see if they can do something with it. But the Wolverine defensive people have just been superb so far in this football game. They have befuddled and literally stopped the Auburn wishbone. Ball goes to Bo Jackson. And Bo Jackson is hit by Hassel. Tom Hassel, number 48. Hassel is not very big. He's only six feet, weighs about 210, but he plays about 240. Penalty coming up against Auburn. Procedure. Once again, uh, to me, it seems that the quarterback is, and the lineman cannot hear the snap count. Auburn still is going to have to throw some. The Michigan defense are all over the running game, meaning they've got 10 men up there close, ready to tackle the ball carriers at the line of scrimmage. One man playing deep, really. That's the one on the wide receiver. Everybody else playing the run. 12 minutes and 28 seconds to play in the football game. Tamborello is back in at center for Auburn. Now the first man again. That's 11 carries for A.G. And he roots it on down to about the 41. I cannot understand that uh, you still try to run the triple option with everybody up on the line of scrimmage. And they're making the fullback keep the ball, and that's wise where they can't get the ball outside to Jackson. You can see Pat Dye's giving the offensive coordinator some instructions right there. Jack throw. That's Bo Jackson hit at the line of scrimmage. Momentum carries him inside the 40 to the 37. So they've third down and nine. Look at these numbers here. Bo Schembechler told me, I said, Frank, you going I said, Bo, you're going to single cover the receiver? He said, we're going to force him to throw. If they throw and beat us, they just beat us. But they're not going to beat us running the football. There are the percentages. Third and nine. Up the middle, Jackson does not get the first down. He stopped short of the 32 by Mike Mallory. But if I, in this situation with a national, possible national championship, at least the ramifications, he's got to go for it. He's got to go for it. I wouldn't attempt to punt or field goal. He's got four good yards to, to cover. Well, they haven't made four yards on third down today, I don't believe. Maybe two, but not four. 
double re wide receiver, triple receiver. That's a pretty good formation. Yeah, he's got Jackson in the slot. Now right. they can roll out that way and have a chance. Jackson coming back. Campbell keeps it. He's got the first down. Big play, Randy Campbell, Michigan 18. Here's a great play by Campbell. A tricky play. They lined up in a passing formation. Jackson comes back in motion, and then it's a reverse kind of play, and you can see that it caught Michigan unawares. They were out of position, and Campbell, once again, makes the key play on fourth and four. That should tap up the Auburn offensive line. Yeah, but they've been getting to about this point, Frank, and stall it. They have not scored in 13, but once in 13 tries from this far of the field. That's Jackson. Searching for some daylight. There isn't much. Maybe two yards. Auburn tried to get in a surprise formation, an unbalanced line to give an extra blocker to Jackson, but Michigan would not be fooled. They move right over as we look at Jackson for the ball game. 17 try rushes. They want to get the ball to him at least 20, but he hadn't had much of a chance. He, oh. Kyle Collins is back in there at fullback now. Age is out. Well, they give it to Collins. Michigan just swarmed it. I don't want to talk strategy, but I, I can't help but doing it because Michigan is penetrating, forcing the fullback to keep the ball on virtually every triple option. That's not the Darrell Royal Bud Wilk, uh, uh, Bears with the style of play. If you're going to do that, we're going to block that man and take it one hole wider so we can get the ball outside. Well, they've broken the bone again. Same formation in the last big play. Triples to the right. Third and seven. Campbell looking to throw it. Goes down the middle with it. And did they intercept it? No. No, nope. incomplete forward pass. Almost picked off by Tony Gant. Well, now Pat Dye's got a decision. He's not go Yes, he is going for the field goal. He's got eight minutes and 53 seconds to play in a football game. Here's West, the deep man down the middle. You can see that uh, Auburn, uh, excuse me, Alabama, uh, I'll get it straight in a minute. Michigan is all <laughs> over him. I was going to say, Keith, that uh, Del Greco has missed one field goal already today. He's been one for two. Well, he hit from 31, and this is from 31. He did kick six in a, six in a row against uh, Kentucky this year. Mike Mann will hold it. Trying to make it seven to six. Not a leg, and it's good. So with eight minutes and 51 seconds to play in the football game, Auburn pulls within one point at seven to six. Buford, number 11, the wide receiver. Look how wide open he is. Uh, Camel just couldn't see him. Look at, uh, look at Yemen. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. He's wide open for a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. There wasn't anybody within eight yards of him. But he didn't see him. Well, the Auburn defense gave the offense the football and on the way on the Michigan side. They can only get three points out of it. But they're now down by just one point. Del Greco kicks off to Cooper at the goal line. And Evans coming out to about the 20. Eight minutes and 46 seconds. And once again, the, the heat's on the Auburn defense. They've got to hold this Michigan team. Michigan's offense has been pretty quiet now for the last two quarters. I think the difference in the Auburn defense, they're getting a heavy pass rush on Smith on virtually every time he goes back to pass. And that has been the big difference. You can see the Michigan last six possessions, only one first down in the last six possessions. That is a great tribute to that Auburn defense. From the 20, Steve Smith gives the ball to Rick Rogers, and he's got a yard. Dave Ottman, number 61, made the hit for Auburn with help from Jeff Jackson. Number one priority for the Auburn defense, stop Michigan on first down, throw them into a passing situation. If we look at Pat Dye, then we can 
lay our ears back and put some pressure on Smith, and that has been successful in the last six possessions. Yeah, this is kind of tense time now. Isn't yes, it? it is. The defense has got to stop them right here where the offense can get good field position. Steve Smith, a resourceful quarterback, the senior of Michigan, looking around. Crowd is roaring. Noisy in the Superdome. Steve on a roll. Has time. Throws to the sidelines. The pass is complete, but it is short of a first down. It is caught by Vincent Bean. That was a good strategy for uh, Michigan to roll out rather than uh, to throw in the pocket. The rush to, when he was in the pocket has, has really made him very ineffective and being is right on the boundary. The safest pass you can throw that far of the field. All he's got to do is catch it, control it, and come down with one foot and bounds. And he just, that's a drill he does every day in practice. It's third down and two for the Wolverines. Oh, what a crucial down for Auburn. Smith coming. Puts it in the air. Incomplete. For Mark Gray. Hard to throw the football 20 yards when you are uh, on the dead run like that. Keith, that's a, that's a very vital point. The receiver should have cut it all short. And here's the graphic. You know, only two losses. Michigan failed to rush for over 200 yards. They're rushing today. Mi Michigan won one four. Auburn's got a chance to win because of it. There was a fellow that was part of the Sugar Bowl ceremonies, great players of the 50-year history. A couple of them uh, involved here. Fellows named Charlie Trippy and Harry Gilmerson threw that guy. It's a low kick. Gaines may have a little room. Went the wrong way. He went toward the boundary side of the field and ran right into a Michigan man, Bob Perryman. 38-yard punt, and Auburn will have the football. Fairly good field position up around the 39-yard line. Both teams intact, call to the sidelines to talk with their respective coaching staff. And Pat Dye looks to me like he is a little hot. He is hot. Uh, the strategy has not been what he expected. There goes that lead man out of the wishbone, Tommy Agee, fighting for yardage and still pounding away. And he's up to midfield, and that's a great run. There's a penalty, though. No, he didn't. I'm sorry. It's the first down. I'm, I'll take it back. Boy, did he keep his feet. He made most of that yards on his own. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. Age is just a freshman. Although he had four or five speed, you can see the defensive end ran up the field. Now Age starts trying to cut back, and Cochran should have made his tackle with his arms, and now another man has him right there. I don't, can't see that number. 14, Gant, and, and Cochran missed him. Yeah, but Cooper had a shot at him. He just tried to stick his helmet in the stomach, knocked yeah. the ball loose instead didn't, of using his arm. Didn't use his arm to wrap him up. First down, and they go back to A.G. again, and he's got a couple of yards at midfield, moving it down to about the Michigan 48. ABC's Wide World of Sports premieres next Saturday at 5 Eastern, 4 Central Time. Both segments in the program will come out of the Far East, the Harlem Globetrotters in Hong Kong, and the World Cup weightlifting championship from Tokyo, Japan. Best play that Auburn can run against what Mission is doing is a base handoff to the fullback, but block everybody, not the Vanessa. And Bo Jackson on that counter play, coming back down to about the 45, and now they're looking at third down and five. Boy, if, if Auburn had a pass off of that particular play, they could have scored a touchdown because Michigan, believe me, their backs are right up on the line of scrimmage, making the tackles as the ball carry hits there. They're literally playing at 8-3 right now. Yes, they are. And the safety is only four or five yards deep. Now the spread formation runs them into a uh, different defense. Third and five. Campbell got it, spins it. And he reaches the 42. That's short of the first down. Oh, fourth down and two. Now, Campbell made it on a keep play on fourth and four. Now it's fourth and two. And uh, A.G. comes out of the ball game. Limping. Still, Auburn has run 54 plays and passed only seven. That's about 90%. My arithmetic is correct. We better hurry. Time remaining in the game. Michigan 7, Auburn 6. Kyle Collins 
looking around. Give it to Lionel James going to the outside. Got the first down. The little man. Bo Jackson. Big block to get him around the corner. Boy, I don't know, Frank, but I, this is a it's well executed play by Auburn here. It, you get a good block from they get a good block from Collins 23 and also Jackson, but the key is right here. Yep. Cooper, 21, overruns the play and the looseness of James, the ability of James, diving across, cutting back for the first down. But this Michigan defensive bunch has just played their hearts out. They certainly have. Their, their scheme has been outstanding. And their effort. First down just inside the Michigan 39 with five minutes to play in the game. This is Bo Jackson. And he pounds his way on down to the 31. Evan Cooper finally brought him down. One thing that we see a lot of missed tackles against the wishbone because the, the defense is spread very thin trying to play the fullback, quarterback, and the pitch man. There's not a lot of gang tackling. Cooper there. is hurt on the play and down on the field as you see the numbers for Bo Jackson. Now Jackson with 126 yards and there what only two other running backs that uh, were able to get over 100 yards against Michigan, Owen Gill of Iowa and uh, Keith Byers of Ohio State. We've got a timeout for Evan Cooper. It is second down, that big run by Jackson. Second down and about, well, it's not quite three yards, two and a half or so. Time, 440. Ball on the Michigan 31. Got to go inside the 29 to get the first down. They flex the tight end West out. And Campbell keeps it. And he is hit right at the 30-yard line by Al Sinsich, the junior out of Cleveland, the nose guard. Oh, the Michigan defense. When you play some defense for Bo Schimbeck, as we look at what the, the Auburn backfield has done, pretty darn impressive, but they've had so far to go. The field position has been so bad they can't get any points on the scoreboard. But to play defense for Michigan, you accept you are selected on your attitude, your intensity, your dedication, your commitment, and the Michigan defense shows it right here. Five men front right now. Third down, two. Lionel James cuts it back against the grain and will have the first down. So once again, 166 pound Lionel James makes the big play for Auburn. What a great player he has been for three for four years for Auburn. The coaches tell me he's really the leader of this football team. He is the bell cow, the one that pepped them up, asserts the leadership, gets them going when they need to. You can see him hustling them up there in the huddle right now. Cooper has come back into the lineup for Michigan. Evan Cooper played an outstanding ball game. Shaken up, shook it off, back in. First down over. Michigan 28 down the line goes to James. Jackson with a block for him. Can't get around the corner. Evan Cooper made the play for Michigan. And he's hurt again. Oh, he pops up. Yeah. Cup is a tremendous football player. Hurt his shoulder a little bit there. Seems like he got his stung. But Cooper came up and took on the blocker, Jackson, and got away from Jackson's block and made the tackle. Once again, Auburn, I want to mention again, Auburn has been in this position on the field in the last three ball games 15 times and scored one touchdown. As Bo Schenbeck, what a great career he has had. Tremendous defensive football coach. And You've got a leader. timeout now with three minutes and eight seconds to play in the football game, and it's second down and ten. What are you going to say, Frank? You've got some profound comments to make. I want to hear you and Bill Yeoman get after it. The well, old Army Center and uh, and uh, the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. I want to referee with Ted Koppel some discussion about the possibilities and probabilities of an e eventual playoff system. The Bill's in confidence. Bill's going to be against the playoff, and uh, I'm going to speak in favor of a college playoff in Division I. Bill, of course, the head football coach and a great one at Houston. That'll be with Ted Koppel and Nightline right after your local news tonight. But right here in the Superdome and the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana, 
Ain't no crawfish swimming upstream right now. It's 308 to play. And both sides laden with tension. Second down 10, Auburn, Michigan, defending on its 28. Campbell gives the ball to A.G. and he breaks it for a first down inside the 20 down to the 16. And you ought to have seen the block by Bo Jackson. The right half back and in the wishbone, you share the running responsibilities, you share the blocking responsibilities. The fake to the court fullback, but watch Jackson to the top of your screen, number 34. He's not just a ball care, boom. He knocks that defensive linebacker right out the line. 89, Carl Rose. Rose. And he's a good one. So it's first down for the Tigers at the Michigan 17. It's Jackson again to the 13. Keith, I wouldn't want to trust any field goal kicker in this particular situation. I don't care who he is. I'd want to stick the ball in the end zone. Take it on in. Don't worry about a field goal. You've got to score with it. Boy, it's just too much pressure to put on a kicker. Too much at stake. Auburn hadn't been in this position in many, many years. Biggest goal game in 20 years. First conference championship since 57. Jeff Parks inside. Double tied in alignment. On second down. They're up the middle. It is A.G. and he fights his way to the five. First and goal. It is A.G. who is, is doing it now for Auburn. Well, Jim Beckler told me if the fullback can make that yard so big, but watch his second effort. He runs straight up. Many people say that a fullback cannot make yards running straight up, but the Michigan defense overruns it a little bit. Mallory, the linebacker, outplaying the quarterback, letting the fullback break for the first down. Oh, I tell you, that's hard work where that kid's playing. Too. Watch, he gets hit right there. The people running out for the option play allows the fullback to break for the first down. Red shirt for first down and goal. The ball is just outside the five. Outside, Lionel James. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down back on the seventh. The man who made the play, Carlton Rose and Brad Cochran. Michigan turned that option play into a sweep. The defensive end split, came right in and forced the pitch immediately. Linebackers and everybody pursued to the outside. Watch Rose, number 89, is a stunt. Hassel takes the quarterback and Rose is out there. No one to block him. They confuse the blocking scheme. Jackson should have been out blocking the 89. Second down and goal from the seven behind the line of scrimmage. The play is made by Jeff Cohen, the strong safety number 10. He's playing in place of the injured Evan Cooper. Keith, I don't know why they don't use one of their timeouts right they here. They've got three. Well, they're going to run straight up the middle and try to make the first set. No, they've got to go all the oh, way. they got to go all the way. It's third yeah. down and goal. Keep it right between the goal posts. It's at least coming down to Del Greco if they don't do something here. It's Bo Jackson heading for the corner. And he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds inside the five near the three. It'll be fourth and goal with 27 seconds to play. And here comes Al Del Greco. From the left hash mark. He'll be kicking from the hash mark and not from the middle of the field. Jackson made a great effort and tried to score all on his own. No blocking whatsoever. In fact, he hadn't had any blocking, Keith, uh, in my judgment, any tonight. Made most of the yardage on his own. Well, it comes down, I'm sure Michigan will call timeout and let him think about it a while. He missed from 36. He hit from 31, and he hit from 31. And this one is from 19. And there's your timeout right there. So Michigan spins a timeout. They have one remaining. 27 seconds to play in the Sugar Bowl. Let's watch Jackson. When I say he hadn't had any blocking, see if he wouldn't agree with me. His first penetration, one man right there couldn't wrap him up. It looked like it was uh, Hassel number 48. Safety man right there, Gant, couldn't get him. Finally, I uh, can't tell who a lot it looks like. 44 brings him down. Mallory, 42. Oh, Mallory, 42, okay. Both of them got up slowly. Well, well, it's up to Del Greco now. He is uh, he's two out of three in the ball game. He is a senior. He is from Coral Gables, Florida. He holds just about every Auburn kicking record there is. 
been pretty good inside the 30, Frank. He's six out of six this year. Yes, he is. Well, he's missed three during the season. Four, I'm sorry, missed four. One long one. If he knocks this through, he's got to be a prime MVP candidate, doesn't he? Well, he's been there scoring. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I sort of feel that the uh, the inside running of Agee has been well, spectacular. Kind of surprised. Too, Keith, yeah. You gamble a little bit when you penetrate to stop the quarterback from getting outside. You're gambling at the fullback gate beat you. Agee made two great runs on this drive. Just individual effort. Well, here it comes. Here it is. Michigan will try to block it in my judgment. They'll go after it all the way. It's up, and it's good. Let's look at some reactions of both benches. I would say here, of course, to Del Greco. You can see he hits it solid. It would have gone through from 50 yards. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. The last time he'll ever kick to Auburn. Oh, is he happy? And I don't blame him. Three field goals. Only nine points that Auburn could get. Let's see Pat Dye's reaction. What a great football coach he is. One of my favorite people. Tried to hire him when he was a just a coach for Bear and he wouldn't leave him. Oh, hey, oh he'd do it all the time. <laughs> Signaling it right through. He had a perfect angle at it. To see it go through. You know what? Miami has just scored to take the lead over Nebraska. Well, Mich Michigan played a gallant football team. I'm they telling certainly you, have. their defense was just tremendous. In fact, both defenses, and I said all along, when you lay all six weeks, it's hard to get your offense going, particularly your running game. Auburn hadn't played in one game in seven weeks. Michigan hadn't played in six weeks. The kickoff by Del Greco. Way high. Goes to Cooper, who's back in. He's been in this fatigable tonight. Three times he's hobbled off the field, and Four times he's come back. Chet Williams brings him down on the return down around the 15 yard line. Field goals of 31, 31, and 19 yards have given Auburn a 9 to 7 lead with just 20 seconds to play in the game. Steve Smith, as a little, little playing, Lionel James, has played so well. Steve Smith, 7 out of 24, 65 yards, and been intercepted one time. And Smith started so uh, professionally throwing that ball accurately, and then the rush got to him a little bit, Keith, and the Auburn defense just starts dominating the uh, Michigan line of scrimmage. Going to airmail it right here. Over the middle. That's good defensive Bean. And Bean is down at the 36. Clock stops 10 seconds. that the chains are moved in college football. Michigan with no, well, let's see, they get no, no timeout. They have no timeout. This is the last one. I think they spent the, no, they spent the last one uh, making Del Greco wait on his field goal. No, they must have had one left, Keith. Because they're taking Well, they've called timeout, didn't they? Yes. Well, let's watch the play again. The key being the scramble by uh, Smith and gaining some extra time and Bean knowing how to uncover himself, separate from the defender, he watches the ball in, he's trying to get over and get out of bounds. <clears throat> but he doesn't quite make it. So they have to spend their last time out. 10 seconds to play. Both teams on their respective sides of the field. Trying to figure out something. 
I've been searching through my memorabilia here, Frank, trying to find the appropriate cliche for the moment. I don't think I've got one that's quite suitable. Auburn leading 9 to 7, 10 seconds to play in the football game. Miami leads Nebraska 24 to 17. Auburn leads by two points over a gutty, tough, determined Michigan football team. They've probably got two plays at the most left. Steve Smith back. Gets his pass off to the sidelines. The man comes back onto the field of play. That's a mistake. He's got to get out of bounds, and he does! He does! Mark Ray gets out of bounds. The time runs out. The game is over. He was one step short of stopping the clock for the second to play to give Michigan one more opportunity down on the Auburn side of the field, and he got there too late. The game is over. He may have been in perfect position for a field goal to Absolutely. win the ball game. Absolutely. Great effort by Smith. And Mark Ray. But he was one step late getting to the sidelines to stop the clock. Oh, I'll tell you, if Pat Dye likes jawbone football and Bo Schimbechler the same, they got a good dose of it tonight, didn't they? Their, their teams play with such intensity. If you play for Pat Dye or Bo Schimbechler, you're going to play all out. Now here's Tim Brent. Thanks, Keith. And I'm with the hero of this game, Aldo Greco, who kicked that last field goal. What was going through your mind when they called timeout? I, I knew they were going to call timeout. And I've waited a whole college career to have a game come down to my foot. And the offense got it down there real close for me and made it a cinch. And I just thank them and everybody else. War Eagle. It looked at times like you guys were confused, maybe even a little bit down. We, we didn't play that well in the first half. And we were sort of sporadic in the second half. But we pulled it out. That's all that matters. Now we're just going to wait and see what else happens down in Miami. Right now, I will tell you that Miami leads Nebraska. That's good. That's good. We still got to wait and see what happens, though. OK, let's go back upstairs. Keith Jackson. Thank you, Timmy. Final score in this 50th Sugar Bowl game, Auburn 9 on three Del Greco field goals, Michigan 7. And Michigan just missed having a final shot at winning it. Bo Jackson has been named the most valuable player in the football game, and here are our people who have made it all work tonight and during most of the season. Once again, our final score, Auburn 9, Michigan 7, and we'll wait now for the ballot. Stay tuned for ABC News Nightline, immediately following your local news. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the official airlines of the 1984 LA Olympic Games and proud sponsors of the United States Olympic team. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. In 1984, the Olympic tradition continues. Thursday, Barbara Walters reveals the painful and frustrating lives of victims of Lou Gehrig's disease. There's no reason to get that. Happy fans oh. down in Florida tonight, but uh, not so at Auburn. Not so at all, Gina. Of course, by now you know the news. Auburn is not the number one college football team. That distinction belongs to Miami. The Hurricanes, on the strength of their one-point upset in the Orange Bowl over Nebraska, vaulted to the top in both the AP writers and UPI coaches' polls. Nebraska, the number one team, the entire season slips to just second. Auburn, after the close call with Michigan in the Sugar Bowl, remains third. Georgia, Texas, Florida, and Brigham Young round out the top seven in both. Ohio State and Michigan swap places for eighth and ninth. Illinois is number ten. Hitting the uh, second ten and uh, or highlighting the second 10, that is, the high climb back into the pole by Alabama. The Crimson Tide, on the strength of their route of SMU in the Sun Bowl, finishes 12th in UPI and number 15 in AP. Well, I don't have to tell you that number three ranking does not sit well with the Auburn faithful, including Tiger coach Pat Dye. 
After the polls were released this morning, Dye told a gathering of media in Auburn that it just wasn't fair. I mean, uh, really and truly, our football team really deserves a little something more than being third in the nation when you look at the dang schedule they play. I mean, and and you know, you, you know the you know the thing about it is that through the whole thing, you know the the whole process. Our football team, I have not heard one derogatory remark. They're just glad to be there. And there hadn't been one, one iota of speculation, one, one, not any bitterness. And I don't believe there will be when, when they find out we're third. I think they're going to be disappointed just like I am. But I'm going to tell you something else. In their heart, in their heart, deep down, they feel like they can beat anybody in the country. And I'm not so sure that they couldn't, too. Well, despite failing to win the national championship, the Tigers still return home today as heroes. As expected, not too many Auburn players were on the charter that landed in Montgomery this afternoon. In fact, Coach Dye even chose another route home from New Orleans. But for those that did make the trip, it was enjoyable to them to see the turnout of Tiger Faithful. There was no doubt among the Auburn fans as the team arrived here at Danley Field just who was number one. Who is it, gang? But there's no doubt in your mind who's number one, then, is it? Ain't no doubt about it. Auburn, all the way, number one. They deserve to be number one. I definitely believe they deserve to be number one. Uh, they've uh, beaten everybody they've played except for Texas, and I, I tell you, the Longhorns don't want to play them again. If you take into consideration who we've beaten and, and our schedule all year, and then we lost to Texas early in the year, uh, the opponents, uh, the people that we've beaten and who have they who they've played during the year, uh, then it shouldn't be any question who's number one. I'm probably biased saying that I think we do, only because I play for Auburn and, you know, we did play the toughest schedule in the country. Uh, you know, in the same sense, Miami has a legitimate gripe to say that they are because they did beat Nebraska. Cries of War Eagle and we're number one apparently fell on deaf ears as far as the pollsters were concerned. But to those that root for Auburn, this 1983 squad will always be national champions. A couple of other football notes tonight. Hugh Campbell, the coach. Now you don't Wait a minute, I guess so. The Auburn basketball team scored its first win in the Memorial Coliseum at Tuscaloosa in 13 years last night, beating back an Alabama rally at the